And by the way, that's another thing. Russell Wilson has to be the starter. One, again, uh, Justin Fields is a, con- a conditional pick. So if Russell Wilson can start most of the year without you having to play Justin Fields, bravo. Um, two, the way our schedule lines up, you can win with Russell Wilson to begin the season. It'll be ugly. It'll be 10-7. to 7. But then when it gets harder in the season, Justin Fields hopefully can have a Mason Rudolph type year where he comes in and saves the season. And now it's like, oh, look, see, we did the right thing. So, again, he was going to be the starter no matter what. So it was just stupid. Now I'll talk to your team. Fuck. <laughs> You're a bully. We were having a good pod. Welcome back. Ladies Welcome back. We uh it's been a long time coming. I'm not for Brodo and himself, Mr. Brett Carroll. Charles is always daydreaming. We're two guys that like BS Network. Speaking of BS, I know it's been a long time and we apologize. I'm gonna take full responsibility for that. Um, after I did that seven round mock draft, which was the last video I did, I was burnt out. I ain't gonna hold you. It was a crazy week that week. Uh combination of me waiting to the last minute. Plus, I had to travel when I didn't even think I was supposed to be traveling. But for work, I had to travel for work. I had to watch my niece and nephew. It was a lot. And that and that pod took me out. So, yeah. But we're back. We're back and better than ever. Welcome to Season 6. Welcome to our NFL Season Preview. We're going to have a good time. Let's let's do it. we got a lot to get into, so we're going to jump right in. One of the reasons... Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I've been on, like... I haven't been on even longer than you haven't been on. Let me say something. Damn. Oh, go ahead. Go One, ahead. I want to say thank you to Brett. And I'm being sincere about that for not only holding down this blog. He gives me credit because I started it before him, but it's only been a thing with him. So it's his blog just as much as it is mine. And he's really held it down. It's been a tough 2024 for uh, for myself. And not, as he, not only has Brett held it down for the pod, he's just held it down as a brother. And he deserves all the flowers in the world because homie's been working his ass off both for fun and for work and, and everything in between. So I, I would be remiss in my duties to not at least report that because even though Brett hasn't been doing his thing, even though the mock drafts is, is like the best thing on the channel, he's busy as hell always. Look, he's, he's on his phone. He does a million. He's actually doing things. Yeah. That's why, you know, he, he's actually one of those people where if he ain't getting back to you, you should feel some type of way. <laughs> you really should. Cause he, cause he, he seen it. He seen it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, somebody was just texting me about work stuff. So I was like, oh, See, it's, like, I, I, it's Labor well, Day. It's Labor Day. But I still got to get, get this done. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that. No, I appreciate for, it. Yeah, for life, real, man. For life, real, life, life, life has been lifing. And we usually take the summers off anyway, but this one was more like majority spring and summer off. But that's okay. <laughs> that's that's okay. And but if yeah, you guys hear back. my son, he is he is he is two, so he's two and like two and a half. So he's like screaming. Mm. Um that's, he has two modes, cuddly and demon. And uh just you know, overview for anybody that's wondering, toddlers are uh what what's the the phrasing emotional terrorists so if you know if you hear scream it's nothing it's just a two-year-old just, um and, and it's, it's probably because because miss is either bluey miss katie miss rachel or miss houston are not on the tv those are the four things that are on the tv when he's awake yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but we, we football's gonna... coming up and that's the fifth thing that's allowed on the tv when he's awake and that's no cap that's fucking real life and i'm very blessed for that because any type of football, he's a okay with, and I'm like hell, that's, that's yeah, that's my boy. That's college too, college too. There you go, bro. Yeah, there you go. Not Sorry. basketball, not basketball, but football, and even world football, soccer. It's like cool. I'm just we'll, like we'll, these we'll, two we'll, things. Like we'll get him on the basketball sooner or later. So we'll oh, his cousin's gonna get him on the basketball. My nephew is gonna get him in the basketball for sure. He needs a power forward. That's what he, my nephew needs. He's like, no, don't worry, cousin, I got you. <laughs> Oh, man. But, yeah, let's do this. Uh, This has probably been the biggest news of the summer. This, ironically, this is how long this has been going on. I just – I said I waited to the last minute to do my seventh-round mock. One of the reasons was because we were still waiting on this back then. This is back when they're like, oh, yeah, he's about to get traded to the Steelers right before the draft. And I'm like, I'm not doing a seventh-round mock, and this fucker gets traded in the middle of me doing a seventh-round mock. So that's how long we've been dealing with this. But after months of torture, it's finally over. He ended his holdout, uh, signing a four-year, $120 million contract. 
the move is disappointing for a lot of Steeler fans who were waiting for months to see if he was going to be a Steeler. We do, definitely do need a wide receiver. I, ironically, I'm actually pretty happy about this. I did not want us to trade for Brandon Ayuk. He's a really good player. We are not a Brandon Ayuk away from winning a Super Bowl. And the amount of draft capital that we would have had to make plus paying him, like, so the amount of actual capital we would have had to pay him, now your Super Bowl window is, like, right now. And I don't think we're in the brand now you go away from winning a Super Bowl. So, yeah, I'm kind of happy about that. Um, I'm kind of happy that he stayed. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. This is one of those moves that I was just waiting to see what happens because, as you know, uh, after Debo and – CMC, like I'm kind of, I don't know how any of these uh, Niner products would work or weapons, I should say, would be how they would produce anywhere else. I'm too old and too jaded by other Niners wide receivers, not named Jerry Rice or Terrell Owens that go elsewhere and do something very well. Like, you know, so like, I'm just like, I heard he was going to get traded and I was like, uh, you know, if they get traded for nothing, then it's a steal. But if you give up a lot, I don't understand why. And not, and the, no disrespect to him. It's more about, as I say, almost every year, because it's true, deepest position in the league. Like, if you're not one of the top five guys, like, it, it, it kind of sucks to be a wide receiver because sometimes you get traded for a lot. Sometimes you get traded for peanuts. It's all about the market and how – because the, the position itself is always deep. Some of these guys get moved for nothing. And or sometimes they get moved for a lot, and then they, we revalue them in two years, and they get moved for nothing. And I don't, I don't know. I do you consider Ayuk as like elite? So yeah, that's part of that's part of my thing. Like, let's just assume he's great. I still don't think we're good. I, don't, I still don't think we're a, a him away from winning a Super Bowl. And and to your point, that's what I was thinking too. We don't know. Like, we forget he's got like four quote unquote like hall of fame level players that he's playing with. Like, yeah, he, I, I know it's he no might disrespect be, to him. He like might he be should one of them, shine. Like, he should be Catherine, shine. Debo, George Kittle, like his and yeah. and and the Kyle Shanahan system, like his job is very easy. And again, I'm not saying he's not a good player, but we don't know what he's gonna look like on another team. No, let me he, let me be clear. I'm happy he got the money. Good for yeah, you, bro. Yeah. Exactly. Like I, I'm not I'm not mad at it. I'm saying what you just said. Like when you're the fourth dude that us as non-Niners fans know as the weapons on the list, no disrespect. Like, like it's just hard to evaluate you because it's great that you got paid as that weapon, but at the same time, would you be as productive or more productive elsewhere? I don't know. That's like, uh, I'm sure we're going to get into it later, so I don't want to start naming names, but this is one of those ones where, it's it sounds messed up. I completely forgot to even we were going to talk about this one because it, it came. In, it, it's one of those like I felt weird because I'm like this is the big wide receiver move of the offseason. You know what I mean? Like this is what we're. I know you were hyped. That I don't mean you. It's like it's your team. It, it's just it's weird. It, this is one of those. It's not Debo. At least Debo's got the name. You know what I mean? If if this was Debo, yes. I could get the hype. And even though it's just nostalgia at this point. Because Debo's role is even a little bit more uh, diminished than CMC got there because of the system. Yeah, it's and it's one of those things. Like again, who knows how good he is? And we like, like you said, glad he got the bag because we know he's that good in San Francisco, right? So it's like, okay, there's no, there's no excuse not to give him the bag in San Francisco. Other teams are taking a big risk, and for me, the only way this would have worked is if he became a bona fide top five receiver, if. Then in turn, George Pickens becomes a bona fide top five ish receiver. Which then, if those two guys are top five ish receivers, then hopefully whoever our quarterback is close to a top five quarterback. That's a that's a big what if if this is gonna work. You know what I mean? Like, and again, I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened. Who knows? He could be that dude. And if he is that dude, maybe he does make George Pickens' job that much easier so he lives up to his full potential. And then, again, hopefully you have a quarterback. If you have two top five guys that you're throwing to, you at least put top five numbers up, even if you're not a top five quarterback, right? But that's the only way this works because that's the problem with the Steelers now. We have the most expensive defense in the league but the cheapest offense. So it works in that regard. 
But our skill positions, we got to start paying. Pat Fryer a free agent. Najee Harris is a free agent. George Pickens is going to want his money this this offseason. Uh, we both our quarterbacks are free agents. I know we're not going to keep both of them, but you're going to have to. Ironically, re- we would know as a casual to to your team's, uh, you know, what's going on with your squad, like and, and all the minutia. All those, if they make, if you guys would have made this move. I, it wouldn't even be a win now. It'd be like, no, this is going to be part of our core offense going forward type of move. Again, I'm not saying that to diminish him as a wide receiver one, if that is his true potential. I'm saying it would just be like, okay, this guy's obviously here for the for the rebuild or whatever we become. And everything you just said, we were just joking about it because we just had our fantasy uh, league draft yesterday. We don't know what your offense is. And me and you, you know I'm not even being like, pretentious or, or snarky about this i'm always like Najee harris but even he might not be there next year and it, it, he might not have the same role this year we don't know yet and it's just the steel the steelers what if you guys should come in last in your division not to get ahead of that we're getting into the picks but but like it's 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 you should come in last and then if you come in first you're the most hated team because you don't deserve this success. It's, it, you're going to be one of those teams. You're not going to be able to enjoy the season if you guys are actually good, because everyone's going to hate you that much more. But I don't think that's it. Let's get to the picks or whatever your slides are. Brett ever tells me what the this, slides this, are. This, no, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm, like I said, I'm happy we didn't do it, because, again, we would have – we need those picks to redo our defense and pay our offense. It's, like, it's, it's, not, it's not worth it. Uh, then we then the other thing of the offseason, our quarterback situation. And oh, right. By, by the way, for those that say, "Oh, you talk about the Steelers too much," like no, legitimately, this offseason we've been the. Most to be fair, I forgot we we're going to talk about this because me and Brett have talked about this. So just in my head, I'm like, yeah. we didn't talk about that, Brett. What are you talking about? Well, no, no, I, I know some people that yeah. uh, you guys talk about your teams too much. I'm like, well, the Steelers have been the most talked about team this offseason, like for better or for worse. So like, and to be fair, like Russell Wilson is a topic by himself yeah. and Justin Fields. This is why I get on y'all because y'all do these mock drafts. Y'all get hype over these mock drafts. You talk all this potential, all of this stuff. Y'all never want to revisit all that shit. Y'all were talking just a couple of years ago because I was hype about Justin Fields. Like I don't understand how we're just, if he doesn't do well backing up Russell Wilson at first, you know what I mean? Like what's the ceiling here? What's the floor here? I feel like Steelers fans deserve to be optimistic a little bit here because they it's not like they're devoid of talent under center like my team i just want to point this out there's worse fucking situations sorry to curse i'm trying to do better mr carroll like <laughs> i'm just saying like this is one of those ones where I, I i i know you want me to rip on brett i know you want me to troll him about the steelers that's later in the in the show i'm just saying in this situation there's worse situations if this is the end of russell wilson that's what it is. This is Russell Wilson's last mm-hmm. chance. If you Matt can't have success I, I with Tom, something I forgot who did the poll, but it was like worst quarterback situations, and Steelers were second, and the Giants were third. I'm like, there's no way our situation is worse than the Giants. We we might be third, but there's no way it's worse than the Giants. <laughs> so, Bro, okay, yes, yes, yes. The Italian in me wants Devito to bring us to the Super Bowl this year. Me That's, too. <laughs> didn't the even Jersey, do the Jer- I told you, Tommy DeVito should never be on another team. He Bro, is a New York Giant. Fraud. Brett would be the first time Brett roots for the Giants if Tommy DeVito is in the Super Bowl with the Giants and it's not his team. He's just going to be like, I'm not even – look, he's smiling because he's like, I'm not even mad at that because we like stories. We do yeah, like every stories. Time he throws a, every time he throws a touchdown, oh, like that's all Fucking, I this, I Oh, my God. Daniel – I take – Justin Fields and want to start him over Daniel Jones right now. Trade, trade, oh. trade, trade. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, like, so, so here, anyway, here, anyway, this, th- this is Russell Wilson's last chance, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and we or you have been Russell Wilson supporters. We didn't even make future references on this show in our support for Russell Wilson. We made Sierra references. Hi, Sierra. Yes. Anyway. Now, this is, um, so – you know, it's we're right now we're dealing with if you have two quarterbacks, you have none. I get it. Um, I will say this this is why people hate the media because all offseason long, Mike Tomlin was very open and honest about, yeah, Russell Wilson's our starter. We'll see if Justin, we'll see what Justin Fields can do. Da, 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 da. And ESPN in particular was like, quarterback competition is Justin Fields gonna be started. And and Mike Tomlin was very, very specifically clear about. 
Russell Wilson's the starter. He's in the pole position. We'll see what Justin Fields can do, but this is Russell's job to lose. And then again, every single day, I, and because I, and I know this, I watched it every single day. Quarterback conferences, da, 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 controversy, Justin Fields. And then when Russell Wilson was named the starter, they then had the nerve to say, "Oh, we felt Ben boozled." How he literally said, "This is what happened." Y'all kept running with this narrative, and it's like, but this is why people hate the media because y'all do this. What's the number one rule of journalism? Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, we did. Let, let's let's let's. Give some people some props real quick. Even the media that's hated, like the news media and the really talking heads on Fox News and CNN, push them aside. Now we're talking about football. More people, this isn't even a joke, more people actually care about football, which is sad, but it's true. Like, like it just is, numbers-wise. So when, when, what Brett is saying is actually closer to the truth than when your uh, political uncle, throwing stones in the glass house, uh, starts bringing up politics. Like, this is real. The, the NFL media has some of the worst actors in, in the talking head positions when it comes to stuff like this. Because at the end of the day, in many ways, it's harmless. You know what I mean? Like, like it's not, there's no violence in, in, in it necessarily. You could be messing up someone's bag, but, you know, that's how they're getting theirs at the same time. And it, it like with the Steelers and the Cowboys, if there's a story to be had, the, the NFL media is going to have that story. What, Ta- take it from me, a Giants fan. Media. New York media does it. Yeah, like, I, think the, I think the media in general, like especially sports. So like for me, journalism school, the first thing they teach you is we're not the story, right? We're supposed to report the story. We can't be the story. And yes, they always say sports journalism, you can get away with a lot more than, than politic journalism and, and hard news journalism. But to me, I just feel like now more than ever, the media has become the story. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is the type of stuff that happens where it's like they put out the narrative on purpose. They run with it as if it's fact, as if they didn't put that narrative out. And then when things don't go a certain way, that or or when they do go a certain way, they throw their hands like, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened. Oh, no, it's controlling the narrative. It really is. Because at the it's end like, of the day, ESPN will ridiculous. put... So here's the cycle. And you got you you got on me because, you know, we, we were doing the pod. And this is already years ago. And you were like, so what do you want to why to do it? Because me and you were actually just talking about it, right? We don't really have a narrative we're trying to spin or do that. A lot of times me and you were talking about the narrative, ironically. But the ESPN machine will have a morning show start at six in the morning and they will have a conversation. I like Mike and Mike. I worked in a back room when Mike and Mike was at its peak, right? So Mike and Mike would have a conversation. Mike uh, Greeny would do it, have a great conversation with Golik. And that would start the narrative of the day. Sometimes it was hilarious and, and it was and it, it felt organic. And other times it would be leading into Colin Cowherd or leading into First Take. And First Take would argue one of the points made on, on the morning show or Cowherd. Cowherd always had his own spin. So by the time First Take is wrapping up its first half, there's two separate narratives they can attack by. Now, 10 years later, They have social media to whip up that narrative. So by noon, we all have a million notifications about nothing sometimes because it's, and and I know it sounds cynical, especially coming from us, but like with sports, it is just, a lot of this is freaking, somebody tweeted their own opinion and now we're having a whole debate over a topic because one person said something. Me and Brett talk about a lot of stuff. But imagine a global debate online if about how wrong Brett is that GT is better than Dragon Ball Super. That like no one needs that. We all know Brett's wrong. But that's what ESPN would do. They would just but, disseminate but also, that BS also, everywhere, like there's two sides. Yeah, but also here's the problem too, though. And you said it's not um it's there's no harm in it, but there is because a lot of times this stuff is what gets into locker rooms and like so for instance, and like I said, it's not just NFL media. The the example no, I said there's no I, violence to it. That's yeah, that's why, but I, but that's why I said, but sometimes there is because it really does mess up situation the team. So the biggest example I always use in time of the football one, the Celtics, right? That narrative of oh, they made it to Eastern Conference Finals without Kyrie. They don't need Kyrie. Like they they, they shouldn't have to listen to him. Then that whole year they kept pushing that narrative, right? So then when the team fell apart and nobody was listening to each other, it was like, oh, my God, I can't believe this happened. Da, 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 da. He's not a leader. Da, 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 da. When even the, the players were like admitted, like, yeah, now nah, we kind of just got caught up in the nonsense. 
and it's all on us. No, no, that's not what happened. He's just a bad leader. And it's one of those things like, bro, like that ruins people's legacies. That ruins people's, that ruins teams. You know what I mean? Like the, the, especially like a, a QB controversy, stuff like that will divide a locker room. And it's one of those things where it's like, that's why for me, it's just annoying. Cause like, it's not as innocent as, oh, it's just the media. You know, it's like, it's like uh, Nick Saban said, it's rat poison. Cause like, if you listen to that stuff over and over and over again, cause then that then becomes the question. Like they were questioning Justin Fields every day. Do you think you should be the starter? Do you think you should be the starter? Da, 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 da. And good, good for Justin. Cause he said all the right things, right? He said all the right things all summer, but another quarterback could have fed into it. Like, yeah, I do think I should have been the starter. I do think that, and that could divide a locker room when it's like, dude, like everybody knew from the get go, Russell Wilson was the starter. If you know anything about the Steelers, you know, he was going to be the starter. They don't do that. If they tell you you're the starter, they're going to give you every opportunity to succeed before they move on. They did it with Matt Canada. That's how bad Matt Canada was. He was the first ever coach in Steelers franchise history. And they've been around since the 40s to get fired midway through the season. And that would and, and they gave him ample opportunities to succeed. He just wasn't getting it done. Two years ago, Mr. Trubisky, they made him the starter. They signed him before they even knew they were going to draft Kenny Pickett. They didn't know he was going to be there at 20. He was there. They drafted him. Kenny Pickett outplayed him in the preseason. Mr. Trubisky was the starter. And they kept him until he was just so bad that they said, all right, bro, we got to pull you and put Kenny Pickett in. So it's one of those things like that narrative was just so stupid to begin with. And for a guy like Mike Tomlin, who's like already has a uphill battle again, kudos to him for like doing this the way that he did it because it's just like, this stuff is stupid. But anyway, I want to move on to the actual Steelers. I also want to blame Omar Khan. Cause I feel like this off season, ugh, this off season is all his fault that Deontay, I told you this at the, at the time that Deontay Johnson trade was bad, which is why you had to overpay for a Brandon Ayuk. If you already had needed a receiver, you don't trade your second best receiver and get nothing back in return because now you need two receivers and you only drafted one. That's bad. Um, Arthur Smith. I didn't like the Arthur Smith hiring. The Arthur Smith hiring was for Kenny Pickett, but then you traded Kenny Pickett. So now you have two quarterbacks. Neither one of them really fit what Arthur Smith does. So Omar Khan's in his second year. Most of what he's done is great, including Justin Fields. He got Justin Fields for absolutely nothing. And so a lot of people applaud him, and I applaud Omar Khan too. But those two trades, I fear, is what's going to doom our season because we're in a bad position on our offense. Our offense does not look good. It's because we made two, we traded our starting quarterback and our starting receiver and got nothing back for them. Like, and I know they're not that good. I get it. Kenny Pickett is not that good. Deontay Johnson was a pro bowler, but some people still don't think he's that good. That's you that still good. can't trade those type of players and get nothing back from them. Like, that that hurts your football team. It really does. So, yeah. we'll see. Uh, this is going to be a really rough year for us. And, by the way, that's another thing. Russell Wilson has to be the starter. One, again, uh, Justin Fields is a, con- a conditional pick. So, if Russell Wilson can start most of the year without you having to play Justin Fields, bravo. Um, two, the way our schedule lines up, you can win with Russell Wilson to begin the season. It'll be ugly. It'll be ten to seven, but then when it gets harder in the season, Justin Fields hopefully can have a Mason Rudolph type year where he comes in and saves the season. And now it's like, oh look, see, we did the right thing. So again, he was going to be the starter no matter what. So it was just stupid. Now I'll talk to your team. Fuck, <laughs> you're bully. We were having a good pod. Um. Daniel Jones has not looked good in the preseason. Oh, he hasn't. Brian Dayball looks absolutely fed up. Um, well, he's not the only one. I and I just feel bad for you. I, I sincerely feel bad for you guys. I know you. You barely talked about the Giants this year because <laughs> it was like, uh, uh. yeah, it's not. I feel bad because you guys are in a, in a really. You joked, and I've heard other people joke about the Arch Manning situation. Like, no, no, it's fine. Arch Manning twenty twenty five draft. I mean, twenty twenty six draft. Here's the problem with that. We haven't seen him play that much. We oh, no, no, no. I think we're going to be so bad. Like, there's a re. I wasn't being funny when I'm talking to you guys about, like, oh, so who do you think is it the, the top five quarterbacks are going to be in uh, 2025? Just wondering. But, that, but that's the problem. This is not right now. And I say right now because anything can change between now and April, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, like you just said, by 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 April, there's somebody going to be this can't miss prospect that, like, da 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 da. And it's like, we never even heard of him before. <laughs> um, but like, 
Ryan Dayball, assuming he's still there next year, right? Mm-hmm. There's no way he could go back in there with Daniel Jones. Oh no, no. Okay, so if you're asking me, yeah, my perception of of this right now. As a Giants fan, and everyone knows I've never been the biggest DJ fan. I've defended him at times because sometimes the criticisms when I watch the game, just like that just wasn't true. The, the one year he was healthy, the one year was contracted. It's, it's mid at best, but he was, you know, running. He was running the ball. He was driving the offense, and he got paid for it. Other than that, no, he's done. He's done after this year. The only reason he's here now is because he's – six foot five and apparently still mobile and that's about it because uh devito's a little bit smaller so it, it, it's just one of those things where they're they're picking the, the the bigger one they're paying and they're going forward with him because that's what they have to do because it doesn't make sense to bench him before week one um other than that i don't see a, a reason i'm not joking if he was making nothing close to what he's making right now he would have just got cut um well, he would get picked back up. I don't think he's that bad. You know, you know what I mean? Like I've seen worse quarterbacks get, get signed over and over again. I feel like he's a good locker room dude. I feel like, like if he wasn't getting paid that, he would just become our backup. Um, but I feel like there's a good chance this team's biggest problem is the offense. Our pass rush looks great. Uh, Dexter Lawrence, Brian Bur- Burns, Kayvon Thibodeau, that core – uh, sexy Dexy is some people's uh, defensive player of the year, which makes me happy. Awesome. I'm not jinxing anybody on my defense with that curse. Uh, so, uh, but, and I'm excited for Banks at the cornerback position. So I'm excited for the defense, just to be clear. I'm not delusional enough to think a defense at their peak could get us into the playoffs. I just think it'll make it somewhat of a bearable year, have some fun moments, something similar to the Jets last year, as bad as that sounds to so many people. Um, I just think it's over. I, I think that's. I really don't want to be repetitive. I'm being. I'm trying to be, be be as sincere as possible. He's one of these dudes that I feel like the writing's on the wall. Everyone knows it. Short of him coming out and having an undeniable season, that's what I mean. Undeniable. He's done. He's done. He could be a Panthers quarterback next year. Not to be funny. He's from Duke. He's from Duke. Please don't put that on. <laughs> Don't be don't be shocked if, if, if he's traded or he's not cut. You know what I mean? Like people overrate quarterbacks all the time, and Wait, the worst yeah, that, play in most people's minds with Daniel Jones is a seventy yard run where he fell. That's like the most embarrassing thing he's done. He still turns the ball over in ways that are unex, that's unacceptable. He, I don't care what his defenders say, mind you. To Brett, I'm like the worst Giants fan. So imagine me if I'm the worst Giants fan to y'all. I'm saying this. There are some delusional ass Giants fans that think he wasn't the worst quarterback last year because, oh, there was injuries here. There were injuries there. I saw two other dudes with the same team. He was the worst guy I watched. It's my team. I want all of them to succeed. I want the next man up to be so consistent with the New York football Giants. We're like Alabama 10 years ago. It doesn't matter who's coming in. We're going to win. That's what I want my team to be like. And the guy that's getting paid the most on my team that cost us Saquon Barkley is that guy. Because let's be real. If he was just serviceable, they would have just paid Barkley just to be like, yeah, consistency. Because that's what the Maras do. The Maras and the Roonies cut from the same cloth. They are literally family. They, They operate the same way. The reason they're being so loyal to Daniel Jones, to everyone wondering why are they so loyal to Daniel Jones, he went to Eli Manning's football camp. It's one of those things where it's a lot closer to home than you think, and they just feel bad because they really feel like they they didn't put him in the position to succeed, which in the first couple of years, absolutely true. The, The offensive line was the worst in the league, but at the same time, when an undrafted rookie steps into the same team that you're suffering from when you're getting paid millions and he comes in and he becomes a household name, that's on you. And it's just writing on the wall at this point. It's, it's, it's a giant problem because I, I'm a mortal. I'm going to die one day. And I know 2024 NFL Giants is probably going to be, wow, wow, who are we going to draft for most of the season? Well, and that okay. just sucks. Well, I'm glad you said that. So, again, th- here's the issue. Right now, the quarterback class isn't that good. Um, you're hoping that one of these kids, like, come out of nowhere. And, like, because that's the thing, like, a lot of mock drafts now have you guys like trading up for like Carson Beck, and I'm like, oh, that's not like, is he that much better than what you have now? Um, Bro, and honestly, and, and this is just to answer that part of the question. At this point, with Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones 
isn't Kerry Collins. I'll put it like that. Two Giants fans. There are some fans, younger fans, that, that have this love for him. He's their first pick. They All they know is Eli. There is not the love there. We can draft somebody, and if he sucks, it, you know, that doesn't mean you don't draft somebody to replace the shit you have. That's all I'm saying. So what I wanted – so I made a list of a couple quarterbacks that hopefully have like a Jaden Daniels. Remember, Jaden Daniels came out of nowhere last year. He was supposed to be like a fifth-round pick. He went second over. Why are you just trying to ruin my hype for prime son? I just like I just want to be hyped because well because Shador Carson Beck maybe even Quinn Ewers these are guys that um, are projected to be first round picks. I'm I, the list I have right now are guys that aren't projected to be first round picks that if okay. they have a great season maybe could jump the line per se. So we have Jalen Daniels from Kansas. He's a little short. He's six foot two twenty, but he but he's got all the talent in the world. We have Donovan Smith from Houston, 6'5", 235. He, you know, we got to see some things from him. Uh, this is the guy I've told you about a couple of times. Drew Alar from Penn State. They're going to compare him to Josh Allen and Big Ben. He's that big, you know, uh, white guy that's super athletic for a guy his size with a cannon for an arm. Sounds he's, like a future giant. Yeah, like he he. we just haven't seen the consistency from him. Um, Sounds like a giant, <laughs> but, just, but just like Josh Allen and Ben Roethlisberger, like sometimes he just, he 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 could be a gunslinger with the turnovers and the decision making and stuff like that. Real but, quick, uh, real quick, real quick, I want to point out your, your haterism. You're literally talking about the Giants. You just said gunslinger, and you brought up who did you bring up that just completely doesn't give a shit about turning the ball over? And you're not saying the name of the Giants quarterback who didn't give a shit about turning the ball over, who you called inconsistent, and it was a big dumb white guy. But Eli Manning wasn't big like like Josh Allen and Big Ben. Wait, how tall is how tall are they? Eli's big. You forget how big Peyton is. Yeah, no, no. But Eli was he was still like a slender build, and he was more like a quote unquote pocket passer. I'm talking about just oh, you mean big? Okay, yeah, my bad. That's I just thought you meant complete stature. I was no, like, no, 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 no. You might only look small compared to Justin Tuck. No, 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 no. That's what I'm saying. That, like, no, no. This Drew Alar guy. He looks like like if you were to build a, a oh you mean literally looks like Big Ben yeah 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 because yeah. Big what, Ben looks like he drank beer his whole life like he just yeah, came that's, out that's what, that's what I'm saying. So, okay. like, that's what I'm saying they're gonna compare him to Josh Allen and Big Ben oh okay see I wasn't even being that vain with it I actually yeah, but, no, no, I no, he, been, no no he's that big country strong you know like Josh Allen fit like I know Big Ben is in shape compared to me and you but I'm just saying like. like Tell no, me but your head, but, head don't have but a yeah, but like you know, but the, the problem with Drew Alar is not only have we not seen the consistency, unlike Josh Allen and Big Ben, even though he has all that talent, we haven't seen like the wild plays. You know what I mean? Like with Josh Allen and Big Ben, they do stuff, they do stuff that make you pull your hair out, but at the same time, like they also do things like, yo, I don't know too many people in the oh, world. Oh, so you really mean athletic, athletic. You mean yeah, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. that mobility. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's got, that, that, he's got that mobility. I'm old, dude. I know Big Ben. But by today's standards, he's not mobile. You know what I mean? Like Big Ben's just he's well, a truck. <laughs> yeah, but the funny thing is, Big Ben was like ahead of his time. Like, like one of the reasons why he didn't get as much hype as he did is because that was back when like the the pocket passer was still the norm. Yeah, mobility. His 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 benefit now it was a negative back. Oh yeah, and he I, played, I if he played now, they would be talking like to, about him as if you know what I mean like they. He'd be getting more hype than Justin Herbert gets, and, and a lot of people. Oh, bro, just... you, they would have you guys would have had a coach. No, again, no disrespect to the guy that won with him, um, that would have been just using him with mo- way more mobility designed plays, like mm-hmm. to, to either mask an option or or actually run that option and and, and just hit. Because like me and you make jokes, but we're literally arguing about two Hall of Fame quarterbacks when we make fun of our quarterbacks over the last twenty years. So like Big Ben. If they he's to make a local reference because it's me and Brett here, we're both Nets fans. Brooke Lopez, they 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 tried to make him something he wasn't instead of just making him better of what he had. And and a lot of Big Ben was that Big Ben was great at the end towards the you know what I mean like so I'm not trying I'm I'm really splitting my hairs, but did you did, you want me to get Big Ben two I understand your little stupid reference you're making. You no, want, no, no, you want no. Big Ben two point Just say two point No, no, well, no, no, what, no, no, what, no, no. What I'm saying, I'm saying, this guy has all the potential in the world. We, well, ironically, we haven't seen it. Like we, that's that's what I was saying. So like, they're gonna compare him to Josh Allen and Big Ben because he has a similar build and a similar play style. But unlike them, we haven't seen those incredible like top ten plays 
where it's like, oh my God, like we got to take this guy. But again, he also plays at Penn State. So I don't know if they, they run an offense where you would see that. But Penn again, State's if one of the weird a, schools. Man. If he has a, if he has a great year, I, he's a guy that could be the number one pick in the draft. He really could be. Um, but Penn State's one of those weird schools where he can get overhyped just by one or two crazy games. Yeah, yeah, he can have a JJ McCarthy that season where like he just has two plays where it's like, all right, yep, nope, he's no one pick. Um, Connor Wegman from Texas A and M. Uh, he looks really good, but he has a small sample size. His arm strength is I'm a little iffy on that, but we got to see it. Um, nah, Riley you, Leonard. If you're playing in MetLife, you need arm strength. There's too much wind. Yeah, that yeah that that was yeah to me that was one of Eli's problems too. To to be honest with you, like when it was really windy, like his arm strength kind of like I remember when y'all played Philly and it was like a windstorm and Donovan McNabb was just slinging it all over the place and Eli like his balls just kept dying and it was just like yeah that's that's like young as hell Eli. Oh, uh, what year was this? You said Donovan McNabb, dog. Yeah, it was, no, yeah, because I was in DC uh for, for President Obama. So it had to be 08. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> this is a guy you you're not gonna want. Riley Leonard, he's at Notre Dame now, but he went to Duke. So I know nope. gonna, yeah, I know you're not gonna want him. Next topic. We're, we're, uh, we got Dylan, slides. Dylan Gabriel from Oklahoma for from Oregon. He was formerly of Oklahoma. He's small, but like can sling it, but he's just small, he's like really small. Um KJ Jefferson from UCF. Uh, I think he, w- I think that's the same KJ Jefferson that went to Arkansas, but is now at UCF. So we'll see what he, again, big, like super athletic guy. We'll see what he can do in a new offense. And then Cam Ward from Miami, again, small, but has all the arm talent in the world. Um, so those are the, those are the list of eight guys that like, you're like, if you're a Giants fan and you want to watch college football this year, look out for those guys, see if they could have like a, a huge upswing um this year because that might be a guy that you guys take if not in the second round um but what you really hope is like they really just you know take it to another level this year so that they could be a top five pick so those are the guys that you guys should look out for don't say i didn't try to help but obviously yes the carson becks of the world the shador sanders the quinn ewers of the world i know you want shador shador's arm strength again just not there um so you know we'll see carson beck is they're calling a better Kenny Pickett. That's what they're comparing him to. Oh, oh. And yet he's supposed to be the number one pick in the draft. That just tells you how bad this draft class is. So, like I said, that's why I'm that's why I'm giving you a list of guys where it's like, please, one of you just have a, a Joe Burrow season where you come out of nowhere or a Jaden Daniels season where you come out of nowhere because that's what you need. All right. Your other favorite team, the how about them cowboys? Um, Jerry Jones strikes again. If the Steelers weren't the talk of the town this offseason, it was the Cowboys, which is just what Jerry wants. And again, for all the wrong reasons, contract negotiations that took way too damn long. They lock up CeeDee Lamb literally the day after preseason ended, which tells you that they had this deal done all season and they just didn't want to do it because they wanted us to talk about the Cowboys. Um, Jerry Jones then follows it up with comments about how why he's never going to relinquish gm duties and it's just one of those things where it's like me and you hate the cowboys you hate them way more than i do obviously because that's your division rival no no, i also hate him as an owner he's a piece of shit yeah um um but like it's getting to the point now like i was talking to mike corbs about it and i'm like dog like it's not even funny anymore you know what i mean it's like it's like good lord oh no i love it I, i your old eight racist ass i want you to stay there forever please Please, you think the guys you dealt with 20 years ago to now were, you know, had, had attitudes or, or weren't grateful enough for the Cowboys? And mind you, there's a bunch of the stars that don't say nothing bad about Jerry, but they, I also know, Brett also knows, we also know. It's a good old boys club. There's only a couple owners, and he's one of the most powerful ones. And if they want to keep their jobs in NFL media, the old Cowboys ain't going to shoot at Jerry Jones. Like, we ain't stupid about that either. And and it just annoys me because if it was just for the media, how come you you didn't do this with Witten or Romo? Because, like, I I liked trolling about them having a playoff drought. These dudes don't have a playoff drought. True. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, the the, the recent squad, I don't know, at least on paper, I don't even want to disrespect uh, Witten because he had a good, he had a great career. But, but, he had he got the contracts with the quickness. I don't remember him holding out. 
And but CD Lamb's got to uh, hold out. Dak Prescott has questions, even though Dak Prescott did things that Tony Romo was struggling to do with Hall of Famers on the offense. You didn't want to pay Ezekiel Elliott either. He's back now. So, you know what I mean? Like, what is what, it's just one of those things where fuck this dude. Like, I, like besides my love for the Giants and my hatred for the Cowboys, him at Jerry Jones as an owner in American history, and I'll leave it at that. Fuck him. I, ain't gonna, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm never going to work at NFL Network. I'm, I'm 35. I'm good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I understand I'm not getting hired there. So I'm not really worried about it. But like, there's not that much good here. To, for, for us to be like, oh, well, he's actually one of the worst owners in the NFL. Most of the stuff all fans hate about the good old boys club, there he is. There's the guy operating, ma- doing all the shit you claim to hate. Yeah, it's, it's, it's getting ridiculous. And it's one of those things that, once again, they have a talented roster this year. But, like, he'd rather be talked about than win. And it's weird. And I don't buy he's the one actually making decisions anymore. His son's been in those war rooms on draft night for over a decade now. And when there was rumors that he did give up a lot of the reins, it was his son in the war rooms on draft night drafting these players that are so good. So there could be an element that Jerry actually has given up some things, but he still got the final say on some Vince McMahon shit. And he's just petty because he, because, you know, he didn't want to give the coach the credit during the dynasty it was him that did it and and so he still wants to have all this credit but if you're such a good gm why are you even hesitating to pay the dudes that everyone's like of course they're going to get paid like yeah, this, we're not even we're he, not he even does, he does the, about he does the thing he does the thing that i hate the most when it's like you can't have it both ways right you don't want you want all the praise for when things are going right but none of the criticisms right i hate when people do that you can't have it both ways right if you're the guy then be the guy no, no, and he's, he's and he's always that guy. And all the political shit, he, he he'll he'll twist up his lips when he feels like talking. When it's something that it isn't might not go his way, all of a sudden he's nowhere to be found. When he when he's one of the loudest owners, all the time. So his silence is deafening. And read between the lines on all that. He is the loudest owner. There's like it's not even close. Like oh, no that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, rest in peace. You know. Raiders, <laughs> Al Davis, but rest even, in peace. But even Al, I think Jerry Jones, like we hear more sound quote from like Al Davis had win, baby, win, right, and all that other stuff. But like Al Davis was not on Jerry Jones' level in terms of always in the media. And now, granted, part of it is because it's the Cowboys. The Cowboys are a bigger brand than the Raiders are, and the Raiders are a pretty big brand. Don't get me wrong, but like I can't think of another owner in sports that comes even close to what Jerry Jones. Like he has a weekly talk show. Terrible. Like, I'm so good on this dude. We can go like fuck, fuck the Cowboys. We're gonna talk about him later anyway. And this dude, because it's one of those things, dude. You're still on the pod. The amount of times we've talked about this guy that isn't actually about football, and then because of uh, com- complex complexion issues, people get mad at us for talking about it when it's this motherfucker we got to talk about anyway. And he's the one that's making us want to talk about him. And then people are mad because there's so much divisiveness among the fandom. When you got such a toxic ass owner that he's closer to uh, Leo and Django than anything else, like he's one of the worst ones, and 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 I'm just sick of pretending he's not because he got so many talking heads in the media that were cowboys, and it's all politics. You know what I work around, and it's just one of these things where it's like it's not even like slick. And mind you, I ain't mad at any number 88s getting their bag and staying loyal to the dude that gave him the bag. Not hating on you. I'm not hating on any of the dudes that uh, played in the White House. And never caught a charge. I ain't mad at y'all for staying loyal. I hear you. I'm just saying you they know how much criticism he deserves for the bullshit he's pulled in the last nine years. And this dude stays in the media for the wrong fucking reasons. And the rest of the media and the rest of the fandom is really sick of your non-producing ass franchise hogging up so much of the narrative, getting up so much of the hype. And every year your pussy ass gets so butthurt when we make fun of you for your paper titles. You ain't won since Tupac was alive. Fuck you. Can we move on to the actual football teams now? Okay. All right, so let's talk. Fucking about- hell. <laughs> I'm trying to be good, Lauren. I've been trying to be good. I'm trying. So, I've been trying to turn a new leaf. I'm trying to be all. So here's the thing. 
the 2025 Hall of Fame class, Eli Manning is one of the headliners. Um, and his career has been controversial to say the least. Most fans think he will make the Hall of Fame. The question is w- whether he should. Now, this is what we're gonna do. No, it's not a question. It's just haters like you. For uh, hold on, for for times, because me and obviously, I'm sure as you guys know, me and Charles have had this debate since I've met him. Right. So you're a fucking hater. That's why. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to allow him to make Eli's case, and I'm going to mute myself. And then I'm going to mute Charles when it's my turn. And then we could talk about it. Cause otherwise we will be here for hours. So let's get to Eli's case to make it. Let me go ahead and mute myself. The floor is yours. It's right there. It's right there. I think the only dude that's, that's won two rings that isn't in the Super Bowl on a quarterback is a Raider from the eighties. No disrespect. I just forget his name right now, but his case is right there. You can't tell the story of football, not just the NFL, of the sport of American football without including him. Everyone knows his two Super Bowl wins. Tom Brady's story, imagine if Michael Jordan lost two to the Jazz. Are they in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, they are. Oh, oh, wait, you're going to be like, oh, well, the stats, the other years, the other years don't fucking matter when you won. He finished top 10 statistically. It's going to change. Stats change. That's not the argument. He finished top 10 in a prime era of quarterbacks. All the other quarterbacks he's compared to should be Hall of Famers, too. Let's list them off real quick. Tom Brady, Big Ben, Drew Brees, Phillip Rivers. He likes to twist his lip up and bring up Phillip Rivers is better. Take his career. I'm taking Eli Manning. There's two fucking banners because of it. There's two Super Bowl MVPs because, because of it. And the incredible Iron Man streak is really underplayed. Brett knows it. His quarterback went down at at some crucial times, and they had some great teams. Eli Manning got cursed after that second ring. The the O-line retired, and I'm pretty sure now, I don't sound like I'm making excuses, it was never replaced. But somehow, Odell Beckham had the best portion of his career with Eli Manning, and that's Eli Manning's worst portion of his career. Oh, oh, wait, who else did Eli Manning get paid? Let me let me list off. Uh, it was a throwaway from the Steelers that the Steelers couldn't win with named Plaxico Burrs. Uh, Jeremy Shockey didn't have any complaints. Uh, then And then the next four Jeremy Shockey replacements that you all remember the names of, the Kevin Bosses, the Jake Ballards, they got paid. Didn't do nothing after Eli Manning. Uh, how many walk-ons got paid with uh, Eli Manning? All right, Victor Proust. Oh, wait, uh, Akeem, Akeem Nix. I can keep doing this because everyone knows these names because he was getting these dudes paid. Like think about the years that Eli played the 20, you know, the, 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 the run he went on and every year he was never, the, the haters would say, oh, he's not in this conversation. He's not in this conversation. He's not in this conversation, but somehow when it's all said and done, he got more rings than most of those dudes you put in those top five, of those years. I'm old enough to remember People like Brett twisting up their lips be like, I'd rather have RG3 right now than Eli Manning. So don't, don't you twist your face up. I know you said that back in 20, whenever it was. He, he would have said, he said Donald McNabb was better. He's on mute. But he said Donald McNabb was better. He was twisting up his lips saying Philip Rivers was better. Uh, and, and then here, I know he's going to bring up, he's going to be like, oh, Philip Rivers, blah, 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 blah. Philip Rivers had how many Hall of Famers on his offense? One? Antonio Gates? Is that the one? LT? Yeah, I know. That's two Hall of Famers. And that's just on the offense that he couldn't win with. You can unmute yourself. I don't need to keep talking. He's going to get in first ballot. I already won. No, for real. I won. Like, you, you, I'm just, this is for you to dig your hole so then when I can bring it back and be like, I told you so when it happens. He's already first ballot Hall of Famer, dog. So, so are you done? Are you, are you, can I, are you, I'm going to let, I'm going to let the floor is yours. That's what I'm saying. You let me know when I'm, t- when it's ready to tag in. All right. Let me be, you already rabbit. said, you already said three things I was hoping you were going to say. Like, I know because you want to, you want to be like, oh, we also finished uh top 10 or whatever and interceptions and all that. When at the end of the day, no one's going to remember the interceptions. Want to know why? Because there's eight games on the way to those two Super Bowls that have way more highlights than those interceptions. Because on the way to those Super Bowls, do you remember the teams they beat? Real question, do you remember the teams they beat? 
Besides the Packers twice, no. That's weird. okay. Besides those two Packers, the uh, oh, what was the guy's name? They was going up against one was Brett Favre, whoever that is. Aaron Rodgers was the other one. Uh, besides Michael Vick, the only quarterback to go in Lambo and win like that. Oh, because Michael, Vick, uh, I know, but all this stuff doesn't matter unless it's the Steelers to you. Anyway, be, we, be, whoop the Bucks ass in the wild card round. Beat the Jerry Jones's favorite version of the Cowboys in, in, the, in the next round. Travel to Lambeau, win in overtime, then beat the undefeated Patriots. It's, it's the Patriots, that team you guys can never beat. Um, and then Lightning can't strike twice. Lightning can't strike twice. We fucking would have stomped out the, 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 the Falcons, the Matt Ryan Falcons, another quarterback you say is better than Elon Manning. We would have stomped out the Falcons. Matt Ryan, another quarterback Brett has said is better than Eli Manning. And we, we wait, are you talking about rookie year, Matt Ryan? <laughs> We, I'm sorry. How many championships does Matt Ryan have? Oh wait, he's a meme. Now I remember. He's a meme. Actually, no, let me. No, I'm sorry. He's let a me meme. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The NFC Championship game. When I say the NFC Championship game, because you already said the Packers, so I'm skipping over the next week. The NFC Championship game, the second run against the Niners. Are the Niners a better organization than the than the Giants are? Are they better at building teams? They've been they've been in the in the NFC Championship since then, right? They couldn't stop Eli. I'm just saying, like, if he's so terrible, he, he's not a Hall of Famer. How do you have memories that are vivid enough that I can just say that NFC Championship game and you and you remember exactly what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You're not going to make the argument. You're not going to talk about him getting hit 20 times and winning in overtime. Why do you make it overtime? That, that's going to be the argument because you got to move the goalposts every single time. We got time. We got, we need no. We you got we got to go. You need to talk, dog. You're like we got to go. No, when when we haven't even got to our predictions yet. When you're done, let me know because I have. I'm done. Time. I already won. Oh, okay. All right, bye. So let's let's go to the other slide. Why he why he shouldn't be on here? Uh, <clears throat> so his thing, five hundred win loss record. His thing. You can't bring up the Super Bowls, but not bring up the five hundred win loss record. You can't do it. Uh, only made the playoffs six times in his career. Only made the Pro Bowl four times. Led the league in, in pass. Led the league. Never led the league in passing yards. Led the league in interception multiple times. Was never top five quarterback in the league. Let's go. That, let's go to some of the things you said. Right. You can't tell your story of the NFL without Eli Manning. Here's why that's the re- most ridiculous thing ever. Right. There are plenty. Uh, there are plenty. <laughs> there are plenty of players in the nfl that you don't have to say andre johnson just got to the hall of fame you don't have to talk about him when you talk about the story of the nfl there are plenty of people that you have to tell the story of including mario manningham and uh who's the boy that ha- called it on his helmet you got they have to be included they have to be included in the story do they not are they hall of famers no so that's a ridiculous argument that you that just be like that's an argument that's a, that's a that's a icing on the cake argument that's that shouldn't be the basis of your foundation right that's a mic drop when you're already like a first ballot no doubt about a hall of famer and then you say oh my god boom you uh i can't you can't tell the story of the nfl without me boom that's what that's that's what that is that's not a well, you can't tell the story without me, so I gotta be in the Hall of Fame. That's not a that's not a good enough argument. Two, you bring up Philip Rivers. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, I'll save him for another for another for for later. But by the way, those two Hall of Famers that you talk about, LT only had his first for his first year, I believe, as a starting quarterback. So he only had LT for one year. Antonio Gates, yes, but he only had LT for one year, and they got to the AFC Championship game that one year, and a game that LT didn't even play. So that's one. Okay. So Eli Manning did not, like, he was not that great. Again, he wasn't a, a scrub. He wasn't a bum. Just because I don't think he should be in the Hall of Fame doesn't mean I think he's a bum. But the way that y'all talk about him, and by the way, for our younger viewers, I'm old enough to remember the way they used the way they talk about Daniel Jones now. They used to talk about Eli like that. Yes, they did. Oh, I can't stand this guy. That stupid face he makes every time. Every time he throws an interception. Who? Who? I hate that guy. Blah 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 blah. Get him out of here. Then he won the Super Bowl, and guess what? They loved him for like uh, two years. For like two years, they loved him. Then guess what? They, then guess what happened after that? Oh. They were even saying he got lucky. The guy caught it on his helmet. 
Get him out of here. Get Coughlin out of here. He's such a derp. Da, 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 da. And then when he won the second one, then it was, oh, you can't. And by the way, I'm going to give him his credit. One of the greatest throws of all time to Mario Manningham. Going to give him his credit. Going to give him his credit. To Charles's point, that second one was also one of the great all-time playoff runs, let alone Super Bowl performances. I'm giving him his credit, right? So after that second one, then it was, oh, you can't spell elite without Eli. And they've been on his you-know-what ever since. But I am old enough to remember how they hated this man before he won not just the, not just the first one, but also right before the second one. I remember that. We're not going to have revisionist history like you guys were all Eli Manning truthers his whole career. Most of y'all hated him the same way you hated Daniel Jones. But you know why? Because he was a lot like Daniel Jones, underperforming turnovers all the time was not doing all this other stuff that's what he was doing okay and i have two two stats or two things that kills eli's shit right we talk about the iron man streak which by the way to charles's credit does not get talked about enough that is huge again i'm going to give him his credit for that that iron man streak is huge as he just as he said as somebody whose quarterback was hurt all the time and all the what ifs in his career like if he was healthy I'm giving him his credit for the Ironman streak, right? I put an asterisk next to finish in top 10. He finished 10th when he retired in both yards and touchdown passes. Before the year, before they even get a chance to vote on him, Matt Stafford, if he stays healthy this year, will probably pass him in both all-time yards and stats. That's damning. But also, but also, it was one of those things where if he didn't have that Iron Man streak, he wouldn't have been in the top 10. And that's a big deal. That's a big deal. That's a big deal, Charles. And and he knows this stat, and he knows what I'm about to say, but you guys don't, so I'm going to say it. When Eli Manning retired, he retired first out of the big three, out of him, Ben, Phillip Rivers. When he retired, he had played a year's worth of football more than Phillip Rivers. Yet he didn't. Yet he was way behind him in yards and, and, and touchdowns. When Eli Manning retired, he played two full season worth of football more than Ben Roethlisberger. And he only had three more touchdowns and 493 yards, I think, or uh, 497 yards, more yards than Big Ben. Okay. For context purposes, Big Ben, one of his many NFL records, many NFL records, most 500 yard games ever. So even though he played two full seasons, more football than Ben Ben Roethlisberger, his stats suggest he only played one more game. Again, his counting stats that got him in the top 10 were just that. Because he never missed a game, he compiled enough stats to be top 10 in both yards and and passing touchdowns. Because, again, he never led the league in yards, never led the league in passing touchdowns. He was just a good quarterback. Again, he wasn't a bum. I'm not saying he was a bum. He was, I meant, and I actually meant to put clutch. I, let me let me put that on there. I meant to put clutch on his case, on his case to make, right? He was clutch. Not as clutch as Ben Roethlisberger, but he was clutch. The point of the matter is Eli Manning was just a, a good quarterback who had two legendary playoff runs. If he doesn't have those playoff runs, we're not talking about this. So now, speaking of Phillip Rivers, in conclusion, he will make the Hall of Fame. He will make the Hall of Fame. But it's not based on merit. It's based on his three things. His last name, his team's name, the name Brady. Because every Giants fan, that's all they Fuck say. you. You don't get to do the conclusion without me. Oh, no. I'm about, to, I'm about to put My you. son in your conclusion. Hold on. I'm about, to, I'm about to put you back in. Hold on. Hold on. Because even because all Giants fans will say he beat Brady twice. He beat Brady twice. Great. Great. You don't conclude with then say you're putting me back in on my hold team. On, hold on, because I have nah, one more son. I, nah, I have one more thing. Nah, I have nah, to say. because you're I doing have what one people... more thing. I let bro. You... you don't get to say you have one more thing before a conclusion. This is the you conclude it. That's what a conclusion. No, no, no is. because this because this point has to do with the conclusion. I'm gonna put you back in. Just, just give me a second. So here's my point. He brought up Philip Rivers, right? And this is what I mean by name, team name, Brady. If you were to switch their careers, not their teams, their careers. Give Eli Manning Phillip Rivers stats and give Phillip Rivers two Super Bowls with mediocre stuff uh, along with it. Mind you, he's not beating Brady because, again, he's on he's on the Chargers. So his two Super Bowls are against two random NFC teams. 
we're having the same conversation. Giants fans are going to say, well, no, Eli Manning should get in because of his stats. Whereas Phillip Rivers, they're going to say, yeah, he won two Super Bowls, but he didn't do much else other than those two Super Bowls. I don't think he should be in. Another thing that Charles has said in the past and Giants fans have said in the past, oh, well, Joe Namath is in. I'm like, yeah, Joe Namath's playing Super Bowl three. Like, okay, you, you're, you're just fucking rambling now. Your whole premise is your big fucking mic drop was a fucking what if. Fuck your what if. Fuck your what if. Your whole point is stupid too. Am, am I wrong? Stafford, am I wrong though? Am I Matt if, Stafford? If Matt Stafford finishes in the top ten, he's just a Hall of Fame quarterback. It doesn't mean anything to Eli Manning. It does not negate the fact that they both finished top ten. Do you not think some young kids are going to finish top ten right now? The stats are going to fucking change in perpetuity. That's how sports work. Yeah. Anyway, your whole premise is well, he compiled the stats. That's why he finished top ten. No shit. He never missed a game. Iron Man. I put it on his You're talking up. You're making it a negative and a positive to fit your own argument. No, it's just no. I'm saying the reality. No, 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 no. Because here's where you fucked up. I was never against Philip Rivers going in the Hall of Fame. You what? See, 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 this is where, and, and he knows I got him with this. Cause again, we've argued this so many times. He's always said he doesn't think Phil is a Hall of Fame quarterback. He switched. No, I, no I said, he, I don't think he's better than Eli. And you don't think Eli is a Hall of Fame quarterback. So you fucking make the mental connection. I'm saying that about him. Okay. Right. You've definitely said. Yeah. That. I've said Eli's better. He's Count the fucking rings. He's Hold not. on. It's Hold a team on. sport. It's a team Hold sport, on. by the way. Hold on. It's a team There's sport. four here, right? He won, he won those by himself? He played. Hold oh, on. Oh, no. There's four. There's four. You know who's on here? Tiki Barber. You know what he doesn't have? A ring. You know, he was like the leader of the team, right? LT of the Chargers, right? But then when we, we lost our LT, and he fucking wins. And uh, Phillip Rivers couldn't win with his Hall of Fame tight end. Who is Eli's Hall of Fame tight end? Hall of Fame tight end. Really? Who's Eli's Hall of Fame like target? Who is it? Hall of Fame tight end. It's team sport, right? It's All the these team, people yeah. with rings played with a Hall of Famer. Tom yeah, Brady played with a Hall of Famer, defen- right? Uh, Tom Brady Hall played with the Hall of Famer, end. right? So who's the Hall of Famer on the offense that Eli played with? The Hall of Fame defensive end. That no, 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 no. No, yes. Tom Brady played with Hall of Fame defensive players. Tom Brady played with Hall of Fame defensive players. He did not. This is why, and this is why. No, this is no why. that's not what I'm asking you, dog. I'm asking you a simple question. Name one offensive Hall of Fame player Eli played in those Super Bowl runs with. He doesn't have one. Oh, okay. Because here, 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 I'm glad you brought up the defense. No, I'm glad you brought up the defense. Please, right now on the pod, on the record, tell me what the 2011 Giants defense was ranked. I don't know. It's not fucking elite. It's like 20. Okay. Okay. So you're saying it's a team sport. The defense has won it. Okay. Again, again, did I not say he had a legendary playoff run in 2011? Did I not say that? I think I did. He was too busy. But but all those years in between, we were competing. Even though he knows he's on. In those years in between, we were competing. Like Plaxico shot himself in 2008. Again, 2007, when you won. That Mm. defense shut down the greatest offense of all time. I know. So, okay. That's you only. Tom Brady's ring. Okay. So, so the same argument. What's the first? uh, The Rams win, right? That's the first Patriots Mm -hmm. ring is the Rams, right? Mm -hmm. Greatest show on turf. Mm -hmm. That's still fucking Tom Brady. He didn't win that one. No, you, again, you're saying that as if people don't say that about Tom Brady now. Exactly, it don't matter. It's a team sport. You, you're talking on both sides of your fucking no, mouth. I'm not. I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm again. He's yeah. Like, Super Bowl yeah. teams have players on both sides of the ball. Do I not have two times Super Bowl champion? Two times. You're acting like I'm saying. You're acting no, like no, 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 no. Basically, from the record. And I, then I, you're I saying it. every other season besides those two runs are just stat padding. But they were, nigga. Like another, 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 another thing. Uh huh. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. By the way, go ahead. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. He never won a playoff game besides those two years. Like people know that. Every other year besides those two years, he didn't even win a playoff game, like a single playoff game. Again, it. I'm giving him his credit. I'm putting. I said legendary run in 2011. Okay. So what's the what's his what's his postseason stats look like compared to Philip Rivers? 
I don't know. I didn't bring it. I don't have. Oh, that's crazy. I guess Philip Rivers doesn't have enough fucking samples in the postseason. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, actually, no, wait, 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 don't do that. Because I definitely wrote that down a couple years ago. Philip Rivers does have more playoff wins and he has uh, better playoffs. He, he does not have more playoff wins. Yes, he does. I just don't have it in front of me. He does have okay. more playoff wins. Anyway, skip ahead. You lost this argument. He's I, a I first ballot I, Hall of Famer. Again. First ballot he, Hall of Famer. He will get in, but it's on his name alone. If first, it, that, and that's why I said Dallas Swiss Hall, which him in Philip Rivers' career. Yeah, you know why? You know what his name is? Eli fucking Manning, the best quarterback in New York football history. Both teams, all three teams, fuck the Bills. He's the best one. What is okay? What is okay? I'm, 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 okay. Okay. Oh, my. he's better There's than three the three franchises here, dog. He's better than the Jets, who had one good quarterback back in the fucking 70s. Like, what are you talking about? Okay, is Jim Kelly a Hall of Famer? Mm-hmm. Would you Jim want Kelly. Jim Kelly's career or Eli's career? Jim Kelly went to four. Mm. Jim Kelly went I'm... to four straight Super Bowls, though. Cool. Again, it's a team sport. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. Oh, so, 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 whenever and, it's somebody and again, else, and, and again, you know what's funny, and it's funny because when we used to compare, how, wait, how many Hall of Famers did Jim Kelly play with on offense? He had Andre Reid. That's it. Oh, that's it. Okay, so one more time. How many Hall of Famers did Eli play with on offense? None. Plaxico could have been. Plaxico could have been. Plaxico could have been if he didn't shoot himself. He could have been. But again, it's a team sport. It's a team. And, and how many players got paid because Eli was throwing to him? Paid. I don't know. You would know that. I don't know that. Ke- Kevin Boss. Mm-hmm. The next one, Ballard, uh, Jake Ballard. Mm-hmm. They both left. I think they both became Raiders. Both okay. got paid. Cool. Uh, Plaxico Burris got paid by the Jets after a prison sentence, which is also also insane. Well, Plaxico uh, was actually Cruz, really hold on, hold on. Victor Cruz got paid by the Bears after getting paid by us. Okay. Uh, Hakeem Nix got paid by the Panthers. Okay. How many more weapons do you want? Like, I, I, you, I don't, I, I don't, you, do you notice how many you know? Argument: Most receivers get paid; they go to other teams. Like, I, I'm confused. Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm and none co- of them had any success without Eli. Again, most receivers go to other teams, whether they're and, and, and okay, and and you're in all these arguments. You keep saying it's a team sport, it's a team sport, it's a team sport. But every example you give me, they have a Hall of Famer on the offensive side of the ball with that quarterback. You're arguing is better than Eli. When Ben, won. you argued before hold I on, fucking on, proved on. it. Hold on, you argued before wait, wait, wait. I proved it to you statistically. I proved it to you statistically. He's better than Troy Aikman. Okay, I gave you that. Okay, yeah, Troy Aikman's a Hall of Famer. Great. What are we talking about? Great. Like you, you, you were saying I'm a Giants dick rider in that chat when I said he's better than Troy Aikman. Mm-hmm. And then and all these, think- all these stats you're throwing at me. Okay. And Detroit and Troy Aikman has three Super Bowls, and he got in. because He's a Cowboy. He's the Hall of Famer. But that, but that you also get into goes the to, teams you win with. with. But that also you goes get into the teams you win but with. That also goes to my conclusion: where you play, Matt. That's the point I'm making. If he wasn't on the Giants, and if his last name wasn't Manning, I don't think he's getting in. That's the point I'm making. That's why I said if you switch him and Philip Rivers' career, I don't think. Yeah, I but think if Philip like, Rivers had his stats and won two with the Giants, it's the same argument. No, no, that no. That's why I said. That's why I said don't switch the teams. Just switch the careers. If Phillip Rivers has the same stats as Eli has, has the two rings, but they're not against Tom Brady, they're against two random NFC teams, I still think people say, mm, I don't know if Phillip Rivers is No, I, I, I disagree wholeheartedly because then he would be the only thing the Chargers have. I'm not, like, you know, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm being serious. As, a, as, a, as, as Nets fans, he, he, if J, Jason Kidd's going into the Hall of Fame, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's J, one of the, no, like, but Jason Kidd's bona fide one of the greatest. Po- po- uh, and po- if Phillip Rivers po- won anything, he would be too. Yeah, because he already has the stats. But he never had the win. But that's my, but that's my point. That's why you, you play right. to win the game. Okay, but the Hall of Fame is an individual thing. Now, yes, it's individual. And then when I point out how individually Eli elevated the offense, you're like, oh, well, what about, well, what about the defense? That's every true. quarterback, yeah, every Trump, single Trump, person. That's what, that's what Hold on, man. You have to. You, you're proving my my point. No, you have to Phillip hear. Rivers, you have to hear. Philip Rivers, Philip Rivers, and Eli Manning are two sides of the coin, right? One has the stats without the team wins. The other has the team wins without the stats, right? And that's the point I'm making. 
if you the Hall of Fame is an individual accomplishment, yeah, it's, and you're, and you're especially in the NFL, especially in the NFL because the Super Bowls are hard to come by. Yeah, but, but you're talking up both sides of your mouth with that no, team. I'm not. Yeah, I'm you just, are. Let me finish. Let me finish because after I said this at the beginning and you ignored it, so I'm going to repeat it because you've been talking up both sides of your mouth with the team shit. There's two points. I'm just going to keep repeating. You, everybody, you compare him to everybody, everybody has an offensive weapon that's a Hall of Famer, except Eli. That's number one. And you keep saying it's a team sport. One of your biggest points, one of your hardest arguments, is the win-loss record, right? That happened post the second Super Bowl for the most part, correct? No, he didn't. No, it did. No, it did. When they had losing records. That's literally when it happened. They didn't. They never rebuilt the offensive line. So, so they made the playoffs every year. His first, his first half of his career. No, he only made the playoffs six times, bro. The last time was in 2016, which was after the Super Bowl. Yeah, the, right? the, in 2016 wasn't a good offense. We didn't have an offensive line. The defense got us there. We had, uh, we had, we had a bunch. We had Jack Rabbit and a bunch of other dudes. You had Prime Odell. What are you talking about? That was the only thing. Go look at. I watched this team, dog. Go watch it. Go look at the stats. We so, never wait, scored wait, wait, more. Wait, wait, wait. So the we whole... averaged like 20 points. We averaged like 20 points. Because Eli was throwing the fucking interceptions all the time. We didn't have an offensive line, you asshole. You keep saying it's a team sport. Like, when it, how come it's, it's only a team sport when it's him proving how good he is on offense? Well, what about the defense? And then when we don't have an offensive line person that you fucking remember, all of a sudden it's, why well, wasn't Eli better? But you remember Odell. No, but- is Odell a Hall of Famer? Is Odell a Hall of Famer? Eli Manning was throwing interceptions. Since we- That's what I'm saying. You're you're picking and choosing points. I'm no, saying I'm not because you don't fucking only focus on the interceptions with Brett Favre. Consistently. Next fucking question. Yeah, next topic because you're wrong. You already lost. You already lost this whole argument. You didn't even think he was Hall of Fame a couple years ago. Your whole fucking dick riding for Big Ben and Phillip Rivers. Literally- and the best part is you can't even name another offensive player that could even he be in the conversation with the every Hall other quarterback you keep comparing hold him hold to. On, let, me say let, me, let me go back. He will get in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's a fucking inevitability. I've told you that for years. And I'm saying this is why. It's not because he's good. It's because Yeah, it's not because he's good. It's not because he was Hall of Fame quarterback. It was because of this. That's what, that's what I'm saying. But we can move on because we got other stuff to talk about. Let's get to our predictions. He's not good. This is crazy. What, like, crazy. What, is that, that what does that mean? Like, we, you're just holding up a picture. Like, what does that mean? Like, oh, no, these are Super Bowl tickets. <laughs> uh, these are the things that we play for. I know, you, I know it's been a while since you oh, competed yeah, I'm sorry. in one. He was in four Super Bowls? I must have missed those other two. Oh, no, he was in, in two. Oh, okay, okay, I, okay. I, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're holding up a a, a thing of is, uh, is Chris history. Sims? All right, Chris is Phil Sims in the Hall of Fame? I don't remember. Yeah, oh. I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, I guess, I guess, I guess every Giant just makes it. That's why Kerry Collins is in. He just played for the Giants. Team name, last name, Brady is three things, bro. It's three, not one. It's is Phil Sims in? I really don't remember. Is Phil Sims a Hall of Famer? Three. Not one, three. Oh, three. Oh, beating Brady. Yeah, I know. It's, it's almost like that, like, it, only because he was a giant and did that. Yeah, oh, because yeah, no, because nobody else beat Brady, right? Nick Foles. Yeah, yeah. Foles. He has a fucking statue. What are we talking about? Like, you're, you're, you're Is Nick Foles a Hall of Famer to you? No. Oh, why? But he beat Brady. Oh, he finished top 10 in anything? But he, but he beat Shut Brady. the fuck up and can move he on. He Shut Brady. the fuck up and move on. When did he finish it? Well, statistically, did he finish top 10 in anything? He beat Boydy. Did he finish top 10 in anything? He beat Boydy. That's not the only Brady. argument, Brett. See how you're doing? But that's you my fucking point. hater. That's my point. It's the three. It's the combination. It's the three of- things. The it's three the things. Besides the, the stats, besides Iron Man, besides the stats and being an Iron Man, it's his last name. It's his last name. It's, that's why all the Nepo babies are in the Hall of Fame. It's his last name. But that's but that's but most people would. That's my point. Most people would say Philip Rivers is not a Hall of Famer, even though he's top five. Because he didn't fame. fucking win. No matter what, all individual your what is, no fucking accomplishment. Matter. All it's your individual all, accomplishment. Yeah, two and Super Bowl MVPs in passing yards. Like what? Two Super Bowl MVPs. Two, two, two. Again, he should have won one of them. He shouldn't have won one of them. Who? If he didn't do this, if he didn't do that, if he didn't, he shouldn't have won. One if he one. didn't, 
the the defense yeah. held. Yeah. I, 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 I need people to understand this. This was the greatest offense of all time, and the defense held them to fourteen points. And the defense was trash, right? You're saying the defense is trash. I didn't say. No, I'm saying I'm, you, you're saying they're trash. Apparently, the Patriots never have defenses. The greatest offense we had ever seen, the New York Giants. The Bill Belichick line, dynasty defenses. The New York Giants defensive line held them to 14 points. They were, by the way, by the way, they were losing 14 to 10 in that final drive when the guy caught in on his helmet. Okay. I just want, I like, I need people to understand the context of this. They were losing 14 to 10. They had only scored 10 points. Then a guy catches it on his helmet in the greatest play. In again, NFL again, history. so the Pats defense was trash. But your, your argument is that the Pats defense wasn't that good. They didn't have any Hall of Famers on that defense. What it's a team that, sport. What does that have to do with your defense holding the greatest offense of all time to 14 points? I, I'm, I'm confused. Uh, okay, again, so my defense gets credit because for holding that offense to a certain amount of points. But it's Eli's fault for not scoring more. Against the undefeated defense. So didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry. You must have forgot. You must have forgot. You, you know you Eli threw a touchdown. Saying that, that you guys had nobody on offense. Didn't you just get finished? Yeah. That? Who did Eli throw a touchdown to in that Super Bowl? Plexigo. Okay. No, the first one. Who was the first one to? I don't even remember. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. It was David Tyree, our punt returner. Oh, the guy that caught in the helmet. Oh, yeah. So, so, all right, it proved my point even more. He should have won MVP, not not Eli. Nah, that's stupid. Nah, you're just... Thank you. Anyway, NFL predictions. You Thank you for showing you. everybody how weak your argument is. You just proved my point. I fucking tore every point you made apart. No, you every time no, it's a team didn't. thing, it's, no, it's something didn't. to go against I literally... Eli. It's only Eli. It's only a team sport when it's Eli. It's a team sport regardless. Eli never elevated the offense. Again. No, 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 no. I'm asking you, yes or no. Eli never elevated the offense. He did. I again. I'm talking we're, again. We're not. I'm not saying he shouldn't be n- main, mentioned as a good quarterback. Hall of Fame is different. In oh, Hall yeah. of Fame, I don't think he's getting in if he's not a giant. If his last name's not, if he's not if exactly he's, who he is. And and if it, and if he and if his two wins weren't against Brady, that combination of because again, that's why I use the Philip Rivers point. Philip Rivers, if you looked at his resume, he's like, yo, that's a Hall of Fame resume. But people are like, eh, he never won. So Matt Stafford is a Hall of Famer before he finishes top 10. I want to say that now. I said it when they won the ring. But uh, I, I want, because apparently Brett doesn't understand that you can't just finish top 10 in a professional sport because you just played too long. I mean, yeah. Like, you don't start for 20 years. Again, let's go back again. Incredible Iron Man streak. Team sport. Incredible! No, no, no. Somehow no. the team did that. That was the, no, 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 no. First of all, first of all, hold on, hold on. To Charles, all the wins. Hold on, hold on. To Charles's point, I also want to uh, incorporate that a lot because again, he didn't. He did have a bad offensive line, and he got hit. That's one of the reasons why I love Brett Favre because Brett Favre also had Iron Man streak, and anybody that watched Brett Favre knew that boy got hit. So again, I'm. That's why I put. Uh, I made sure to put that. Turnovers in. happen with bad offensive lines. Eli was throwing turnovers no matter what the offensive line was. Stop it. That was one of his. Okay, so 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 now it, 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 we get we get the parse when the turnovers happened, and they were all bad turnovers. But all the losses are on him. Hold on, hold on. Of- stop! Don't do that because the to you your said point, wins losses. To, hold on, to, hold, hold, hold on. To your point, to your point, the Daniel Jones truthers will say a lot of the fumbles is because of the sacks. Eli, a lot of them were bad were bad interceptions. Don't do that. Don't yeah, do but, that. but 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 it's a team sport. It's a team sport. What does that have to do with him throwing interceptions? He made bad, bad offensive decisions. line. Oh, now, he made now bad decisions. He now made. pass rushing. Now pass rushing doesn't exist. Okay. All Only right. when it's the Giants' pass rush in the Super Bowl does the pass rushes of the other NFL teams. But can, can I ask a question? Though? You don't think that's a huge part of the story that they held the greatest offense of all time to fourteen points? You don't think that's a big part? I don't of the think story? it's. A, I don't think you you give Eli enough credit for dropping way more points on them in the last uh, regular season of the game. We almost beat them in the regular season. And it's a fucking moot point. I keep asking you. You keep saying it's a team in sport. The Super Bowl. Who was What's Eli on, throwing on, to? Right. You I'm didn't remember that. David Tyree that's caught the touchdown. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's a that's a very pe- poor example on your part because nobody would have cared if you beat them the, the regular season but lost in the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is the bigger game, right? I know, but no one cares how good the the the, the Patriots defenses have been for twenty years. Like you're going to pretend the defenses weren't the all defense, time, bro, bro. But again, by, by the way, as a Patriots hater. 
But as Patriots, hey, I'm so glad you won the Super Bowl. Because you do remember how smug Tom Brady was when they when they asked him before the Super Bowl. Uh, they said, oh, somebody predicted 24-17 Giants. And he said, oh, you think we're only going to score 17 points? Hold, hold on. That's what he said. He said in the press conference, oh, you think we're only going to score 17 points? I know. I was so happy. I was like, oh, you little bitch ass. You you only scored 14 with your dumb ass. And you lost, right? That's oh, I, a, remember, that's I remember uh, Asante Samuel. Asante Samuel, Rodney Harrison. That's they how must scrubs now. They must be I, scrubs now. Yeah, and didn't Asante Samuel drop what what should have been the game ceiling interception? Okay, so like, what are we talking about? He right before that's another thing, people. Right before Asante Samuel's a bum, Asante, right? That's what you're saying. He's a bum. It's not like, like the the defenses didn't no. matter. The defenses didn't matter. Only when it's us. Who are you talking to? I got creepy as hell. You just turned around really. Hold on, Dave. Dave needs something. Oh, all right. You look freaky it. as hell on my end. I was like, does he see somebody in the door? <laughs> like, no, like, Dave, let's move on. Yeah. And I thought we saw a ghost. I was like, I was like, oh shit, I see some spooky shit. <laughs> NFL predictions: You have the Dolphins winning the AFC East. I got the Jets only because I just don't trust the Dolphins. Like, come once it gets like less than seventy degrees. Bro, outside. I didn't. Sorry, sorry. We'll get back to the rundown. Me, he likes doing these arguments. By the way, he makes me the bad guy, but he fucking lives for that shit. Anyway, I, that wasn't even, that was your most guilty face. You didn't even deny it. You went, "Moi." I forgot at the wedding because I know a couple Dolphins fans. You know, like hardcore Dolphins fans. I was being serious, and I'm like, "Bro, I don't even remember. I just know I didn't pick the Pats." Like, I, that's, I really. It was like, it could be the Finns, could be the Bills, could be the Jets if Rodgers stays held. And I was like, but the Finns kind of moving in the right direction. The Bills, I don't know. Some of their moves might hit, some of their moves might not. It's the least committed division, I really felt. I, I don't even know. I, 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 like, I'm not even trying to be trolly to Jets fans. I want to give Jets fans their props because I have a lot of faith. I, look at my fantasy teams. I have a lot of faith in the Jets this year. It's just that the AFC East, East looks like how the AFC North does in a lot of respect. It's like, yo, depending on if who gets somebody gets hurt, somebody doesn't, if, if everything clicks, if everything doesn't, those types of things. I, I really believe the AFC East could be, woo. but uh, then again, me and Brett thought the same thing about the AFC West like two years ago, and it was one of the worst divisions of all time. So yeah, I, I just don't think the Bills are going to be that good. Their best receivers are rookie. We got we got to see. Um, the Jets again, if they're healthy, they might have the most talented roster top to bottom in the AFC. Like they might, we'll see. Um, we know that defense is going to be good. They they got weapons on offense now. Obviously, we Rodgers. really agreed on everything. Yeah, yeah, that was. Bro, that this was another, never like, happens. I'm not even. I'm not like. No, that, that was another. Thing. I was like, well, I'm definitely just going to go with a different team here because that's probably the easiest team to do. See, here's the thing: the North is weird. I don't think the Ra I, I have a sneaky suspicion the Ravens aren't going to be that good this year. But I. But, I but hold on, be clear. Not that good for the Ravens. For the, right, 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 right. <laughs> right. They're, they're not going to be that good. good. They're going to oh, go one in sixteen. The yeah, they're they're not going to win again. No, no, no. They, Bro, they no, you don't want that. Losses. You don't want that because then the Ravens get a top pick. Either they do keep Jackson or they replace Jackson and then trade Jackson, and they're just rebuilding. And we're all watching no, it like, no, no. no. no the Ra like the like the Ravens lost a lot of pieces this offseason, and they had a they had another phenomenal draft. Like I hate the fact that they draft well. So, um, and like Nate Wiggins looks like he's about to be Darrell Revis, and I'm like, great, great, bro. My they're sister one, makes fun of me. They're My one issue on defense. Fan. They're one issue on defense, and they just got a shut down corner. That's awesome. Um, my my sister really calls me a Ravens fan. She's like, "You're a closeted Ravens fan because all you do is if we're not talking about the Giants, you just start praising the Ravens." And I'm like, "They're a well run organization." <laughs> But yeah, I, 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 but at the same time with the Jamar Chase situation and Joe Burrow coming off the wrist injury, I don't feel confident taking the Bengals. I'm never going to take the Browns. The Browns haven't won. I don't think I've been alive. I, I think the last time they won the division, I wasn't even born yet. So I'm never going to. No, I know. Wait, yeah, it was in the 80s, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I'm never yeah, going to. Yeah, because they won the wild card in the 90s when Belichick was there or some shit. Yeah. yeah but um, Like, so, yeah, like, I'm not going to pick the Browns. 
and our schedule is way too hard, and we don't even know how good our quarterback. You're not in the conversation. Are. The Steelers should be fourth in the division. Yeah, we should. We're fighting for third if we're being honest. So yeah, I, I, I think by default we're we're I'm going to go with the Ravens. Um, by the way, the Steelers have never finished fourth in the division. So just like I'm not going to pick the Browns to win the division, I'm not going to pick us to go in fourth because if nothing else, the Browns will brown. Um, just saying. Um, so to me, I just got the Ravens just, I guess, as default. Like, I just don't think they're going to be as good as they were last year. But again, by default, I, I guess they got them. If not them, the Bengals. Um, the South, the South is such a weak division. Like, it's got to be the Texans, right? Like, the Texans need to run away with it. And for second place, it's really between Sunshine and Jacksonville and the Colts. Um, because the Richardson's coming back, they just drafted Harrison Jr. Uh, there's a lot of upside no, there, no, but they, also- got, they got AD Mitchell. They uh, Harrison Jr. is on the, the Cardinals. Oh, duh, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're fucking mocks. <laughs> I really just remembered one of your mocks, didn't I? Probably, I don't know, bro. Because me and you, I'm sorry. This is how much like the canon of the podcast. I just it's just me and Brett's own inner monologues and our own imaginations. That's why we go off. On it. Because uh, but, yeah, we talked about him and it. Like my brain <laughs> just went back to my imaginary conversation with Brett about. Could you fucking imagine that that indie crowd in the in the in, in the in the dome though? Uh, the, uh, and then, oh. Marvin Harrison Senior comes out every game. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm really, like I'm so I'm, I'm red. I'm red because like it's like I'm a fucking idiot. I'm just a but fucking yeah. Idiot. This this is the I'm AFC. Not stoned. That's the sad part. I wish I could use that excuse. I wish I could just be like, oh no, it's the weed. It's not. That was just the stupidest shit I've said, and I've and I've talked about the Giants. Like you know, the Col- the Colts are interesting. I I, I got to see it from AR. And mind you, I was one of those people that thought that AR fifteen could be phenomenal. Like. He's the type of person like he's really boom or bust. Like I feel like he's either going to be an absolute stud or he's going to be not be good at all. So we'll see. But again, the Texans that have all that firepower. CJ Stroud. I, I know it's only one season, but he still looks like he's going to be good. Um, so I think it's the Texans. And and are, is anybody in the right mind picking against the Chiefs? Like I, I don't even think. Me and you. Let's be clear. If we we low key are fans of 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 a quarterback right now that isn't either of our quarterback. Me and you are both very big fans of CJ Stroud and it's Texan CJ Stroud because me and you were not like watching him in college. Like, Oh yeah, he's going to kill it the way he did. Well, you know, what's so ironic about that. You know, I have a rule. Do not draft Ohio, Ohio. State quarterbacks. Do not do it. And the ironic part about it is CJ Stroud. They were doubting him because he didn't have the mobility that normally like he's more of a pocket passer. And again, it's like I said, we like, we just talked about with big Ben, like the errors have flipped. If you're a pocket. Oh, he, passer, yeah. He, he would have went. Yeah, if you're a pocket <laughs> passer now, it's like a bad thing. And it's and it's so ironic because it's like, oh, the Ohio State quarterback that actually panned out wasn't this dual threat mo- who was mostly a runner. The only one in memory besides maybe Dwayne Haskins. Yeah, like, oh, my God, that's so crazy that the guy that doesn't just run all the time is actually good in the NFL. Who would have thought? <laughs> so it's like, it's crazy. And, and the yeah. Chiefs, man, like, there were, there were three people. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um. NFC East, I got the Eagles. Only oh, look, Matt Ryan. That's a joke. That's a joke. Only, only because, uh, you know, that whole stat of y'all don't have repeat winners and blah, 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 blah. So, Eagles. And, again, Jerry Jones is Jerry Jonesing really hard this year. And, and like, he's his own worst enemy. So, Eagles. Um, no, for real. For re- I just want to be clear. I, it's between the Eagles and Cowboys on paper right now. Again, it's football and it's the NFC East. Crazier shit happens. The Commanders. They're not. They don't look as ineptly run as they have had the, the rest of you know their whole existence. So like they could be moving in, in the right direction, but that's for this season to see. The Eagles should win. It's just as simple as that. Objectively speaking, Philadelphia should win the East, and if they don't, something bad happened. Because on paper, there's no excuse why they shouldn't. Yeah. Like uh, I'm just being, I'm keeping it a buck, man. I want to beat them twice, and I don't want them to score an effing point. Like, uh, but if we're being real, like, how do they not win the East? Yeah, um, the North is where we uh, differ. Um, again, we we agreed on a lot, so I was like, let me pick the easiest one to disagree on. You say the Lions. I'm a I'm a just for shits and giggles say the Packers. No, just you want to know why I picked the Lions and not going with the Packers or some people's the Bears, which I just you know I'm like okay, no way. 
because the Vikings are taking a step back, and that's according to Vikings fans. So I'm not going to act like I know more than them. Well, they, they, but, but, the but, injuries but, but, are just the injuries. Are the Lions crazy. did something last year they literally never did before. So why am I going to go into this uh, season thinking same old Detroit? Last year wasn't the same old Detroit. So why would this year be the same old Detroit? Why couldn't this team with a coach that, for the most part, all of us respect, you know, like they should take that next step. They should. And again, I I, I could very easily see uh, just just for shits and giggles, I picked the Packers because I think it's a toss up. Um, there is something also to be said. Like now, people know to look out for the Lions, so you know, do they have to deal with that? We'll see. Yeah, but at the same time, late last year, I feel like they already got a part of that because there was a one point of the season where the Lions were rolling in such a way, everybody was like, "This isn't going to last," right? And then they win a playoff game. And probably like, should have, and really should have won the NFC title. That, that, that was how we finished it because you and a lot of other people were being so critical. I'm like, guys, we were actually mad that the Lions aren't in the Super Bowl. <laughs> like, and now I'm just sitting here like they don't have a Super Bowl hangover. In fact, they have a chip on their shoulder because it went from there's no chance they're doing anything to why didn't you win the conference? Yeah. And most teams with coaches like that, one or two things are about to happen. They're about to be equally dangerous, or they're about to fall off, and we'll know in a couple of weeks. But, but I really don't see them falling off. That team seems to, to, to be there. You know what I mean? Like a locker room wise, they have the Bills vibes. Bills from a couple of years ago with Josh Allen, when we all went, "Oh shit, the Bills are here now." You know what I mean? Like that's what I feel about the line. No, they, no, they could they could do it. The Packers also have a really really good team. They're like they have they're just good at everything. You know what I mean? So it's like. Like I said, we agreed everywhere else. I was like, eh, let me just pick the Packers just for shits and giggles. But that's a toss-up. It could be either one of those guys. All right, so hold on, hold on. Real quick, we're just really skipping over the Falcons. When on paper, the Falcons should run away with that division. The Bucs might be able to give them some problems, but the Falcons really should have one of the best offenses. That's why I agree with you, especially after the moves they made late in the season. Their defense should be good. Kirk Cousins is even on one foot is better than Desmond Ritter. Um, they should run away with it. That division sucks. The Saints don't look good. The Bucks and, will be and, okay. we're, and we're also higher on Kirk Cousins than a lot of people because, like, he gets a lot of shit for as you're arguing Eli is just being good, which is also like morphed over the years because I feel like this guy's in a conversation now where we need to start putting a little bit more respect on his name because he's been good for a very long time. Yeah, and like it, that's and my he, argument. And if he does it with a third team, it's like. Yo, yo, yeah, yo. man. Like, there's something to be said. That's why when you're like, it's the Hall of Fame, and, and like, I'm agreeing with you individually, right? I'm saying the elevation because I hear the playoff thing, and not to get on that, but as you know, divisions fucking matter. And when I'm pointing to all these people, I'm pointing to other great teams and cousins. If the joke, I hope he gets over it because it's so real. I don't know why he doesn't show up in prime time because I'm because the dude is so good. I, I'm glad he hasn't broke my heart as a fan because I understand Vi- Viking fans don't hate him. And there's something to be said about that. Redskins fans don't hate him. And there's something to be said about that. But, uh, and the Niners, I like how me and you, I, I feel like me and you are both looking at the West. Like, yeah, Niners, whatever. <laughs> like, I was, I was tempted to put the Rams, but they did just lose Aaron Donald. That's a huge loss. So I don't know. Like I, I got, what about uh, Seattle? No. Uh, they're one of those franchises where I'm, I, you know, like keep swinging up, big guy. <laughs> yeah, just, good for you. Yeah, no, like, they can make the playoffs, but no. All right, so winners, you have Rodgers or Stroud as your MVP. I'm going with Mahomes. I feel like after what he did last, like for, uh, well, you know, that's like picking LeBron. Like, uh, come on, we know. <laughs> well, no, but here's here's the thing, and I'm, I'm like, so that's another thing I want to do a mini rant about. Again, the way the media works and the way they do this voting, I hate it. It's so lazy. It's so lazy. Um, to be fair, my mental gymnastics to pick two other guys was literally because I, I was like, Brett's going to just assume I did not think about this at all. If I say Mahomes, he's like, you didn't even fucking take a second. You just typed Mahomes, and it probably would have been true because he's LeBron. He, like, he could I, just said, no, I said Mahomes because Lamar already has two. Mahomes has two. I think they're going to want to give Mahomes the edge there. Um, two, after what he did last year with no receivers, the fact that he has decent receivers this year, 
Like, one, he could just put up phenomenal numbers again. And two, it's going to be like, yeah, just give it to him. He's the best player in football. Just do it. We're lazy. That's what we do. You're the best player. We're just going to give it to you. 100%. But um, Rodgers is the same thing. Rodgers, Rodgers could put up mediocre <clears throat> compared to himself stats this year in the New York market. Like, your whole argument with Eli. And just, I, I'll say, well, again, mediocre for Aaron Rodgers. Not no, 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 no. To your point, if the Jets do mess around and win the division in, a, like, a top two seed and Rodgers just plays really good, He'll probably win it. I'll give you and that. Stroud and well, everything you just said about uh, uh, Jackson. Yeah, and they, they and they want to give it to Stroud. I think Stroud is like the opposite because he's playing on the Texans and they're getting a little bit of hype and da 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 da. I Texas think he, man, like I think he's gonna have to put up like phenomenal, phenomenal numbers to get it. Only because again, I I just think Mahomes is gonna just put up ridiculous numbers, and I think the media is going to be like, all right, we're bad. We're my, my bad Mahomes here. It's, it's your reward until somebody else proves otherwise. Um, you know, I got more rings than Aaron Rodgers too. Just uh, throw that out there. Anyway, does, anyway so. TJ Watt deserves it. <laughs> yeah, um, and same thing with TJ Watt. I, this PFF nonsense, this nonsense. And again, this is, this is, oh, here we go. <laughs> like, he's triggered. It's, <laughs> dog, dog, <laughs> Like I again, it's lazy. Such a- it's it's lazy. I hate lazy. Like because to to uh, to your point, and this is why I did this. This is another reason we did this whole thing about Eli Manning, right? Mm-hmm. This is these guys' legacies, man. Like these awards matter. Like mm-hmm. these awards matter. Like again, one of the reasons why people don't think like because Eli was never in the MVP conversation. Da 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 da. Like Philip Rivers was a guy that could have won MVP like one or two years, but he didn't. Like this stuff matters. Like yeah, but 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 my whole argument against the name thing is. His name went against him because he wasn't his brother, which is which is a crazy thing to say, but it's true. Like, think about all the Giants that I kept saying to you, proving to you weren't Hall of Famers. But in the time, at the time you're talking about, the only reason the offense is good is Brandon Jacobs. The only reason the offense is good is Jeremy Shockey. The only reason the offense is good is, is Tiki Barber. The only reason the offense is good is Plaxico Burns. The only reason the offense is good is Odell Beckham. Like, it's, all, it's there's one consistent, and, it's, and the only time he gets pointed out is when it's negative is just bullshit. Like that's my argument, and saying that he's only getting in because of the name as a Giants. Well, fan, well no, but that's why. To your point, why. hold on. To be clear, to your point about Giants haters and and a fandom, I didn't mean to erase that. I don't think it's as extreme the second time around as the first time. The first time it was real. I don't deny that either. People wanted him gone. That's why I was freaking out because I'm like, we're already past that year wise. It's a moot point comparing him to Daniel Jones in that regard. But like, come on, man. Yeah, no, I. I Again, but that's why I also said the he didn't put up the eye popping numbers. That's that, and that's what I meant by that. Like Phillip Rivers, if nothing else, you knew he was going to throw for like I think he led the league in yards like twice. I think like you knew Phillip Rivers was going to put up the numbers. Yeah, but but how come if Phillip Rivers he never got the shit that Matt Stafford got? So at least you're seeing my biases with the quarterback. So like I mean, he's so consistent, right? Yeah, Matt Stafford's also- Matt Stafford got shit for the same reason Megatron got shit. Empty calories in late games and putting up stats. And Phillip Rivers got no fucking wins to show for it. But no, he won a lot though. That's what they won the division a lot. They won play. They beat. They used to beat. There was like a three year stretch where they beat Peyton Manning three straight times in the playoffs. Like that's what I'm saying. Phillip Rivers, like it's it, he's it's weird because like again because he played for the Chargers, nobody gives a fuck about the Chargers. People kind of yeah. like overlook what Phillip Rivers. Did. I'm like Phillip Rivers was like really good guys. Like we could do a Phillip Rivers appreciation pod that just shuts the fuck up about Eli for one. No, I'm just saying. Man, know, this point, hater looks for reasons to bring up Eli Manning and blames me for getting defensive. Like Eli no, Manning. No, 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 the reason this why I brought up Eli Manning things because the odd couple did a, a segment about this and like somebody else did a segment. Of, again, we didn't record it forever. Like they were talking about Eli Manning like during the Hall of Fame game because it's like. Oh, oh no, this year makes sense. You do this yeah. like every year. We go back through the years. You just figure out a way to bring up Eli Manning and be like, by the way, fuck him. That's what you do. <laughs> but no, the point I'm making about TJ Watt is he again he should be have three defensive player of the years already he doesn't like for some reason one well, i know what the reason is because he's not a pff darling like this is a generate I, for- I i meant to look this up i forgot how many i think he's like 97 sacks right so he needs three but i think he needs to do it within like the first five games or something he'll be the fastest to 100 ever right real quick real quick let's talk about the rookie prediction last because I, I just why, how do you have the Rams in the Super Bowl if you don't have them winning the West because that's not how football works you I know win. that's not how football works I'm saying you think that they're going to be one of the NFC wild cards then yeah over the Cowboys or Eagles 
you get three wild cards. Oh, it's three now. Fuck, I'm old. I was always counting two in my head. Yeah, you get three. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. I'm old. But, but anyway, point I'm making is he should have three, right? We're talking about an all time generational pass rusher. Like, and I'm not like, I'm not kidding. If you look up, we know, we know <laughs> this has been a trigger point for you the last couple of years because it's bullshit. Like, it's bull- like, dude, Miles Garrett wins because of pass run win rate. What? Like, that, which by the way, basically equates to he should sack the quarterback more times. He should make more plays. He doesn't, but he should based on this stupid algorithm that I believe is a PFF algorithm, which pisses me off even more, right? So that's like me saying I'm a better shooter than Steph Curry. I don't make as many shots as him. I don't have a better field goal percentage with him. But because of my shot win rate, I should make more shots. Therefore, I'm a better shooter than Steph Curry. And that's why I'm going to walk around saying like, no, I created this algorithm and According to my algorithm, I'm the greatest shooter of all time because I should make all the shots that I make. I don't make any of them. My 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 true field goal percentage is 12, but I should be shooting 80% from three. I'm a better three-point shooter. And that's what Miles Garrett does. And the outrage because of that, I think TJ Watt is gonna win it because I like the outrage this year was like when Aaron Donald won it, I was like the only one saying, like, what the hell? It should have been TJ Watt. He was better in every single statistical category. But I was like, and it's Aaron Donald. Who cares? This year, the outrage has been like, but not like, yo, like, nah, y'all are wild. How the hell did Miles Garrett win this? So I think TJ Watt's going to win it because they're going to be like, all right, we got to reconcile here. But again, this should be his, he should have three. And that's bullshit because again, he should be talked about the way we used to talk about his brother and we don't. Well, oh yeah, TJ Watt, he's good. But Miles Garrett though. And I'm like, it's because he's a brown. You hate it because you're more. No, as, but and that's the thing. Like, oh, you hate him? Like, no, I don't. It's it makes no sense. Like, how are we giving him credit for plays he almost made or should have made? Did you make the play? No, you didn't. Like, like, like they brought up um, a, a highlight reel. I think it was against Justin Fields, I believe, where he almost sacked him. But guess what? Justin Fields threw a touchdown. But that goes against his win. That but that goes port to his win rush rate rate. So I was like, okay, so he almost sacked him, but yet he gave up a touchdown. How is that better? That makes no, like, that makes no fucking sense. Did you sack I him? Did you sack him? No. And what happened? Because you didn't sack him, he threw a touchdown pass. So it's like, this just makes no sense. So I think TJ's going to get it just off the strength of like, we got to correct that error, which I also hate because Embiid got one a couple years ago off a of correction. And that's the point I'm making. It's like the media has got to be better with these awards. Rudy Gobert's speaking of first ballot Hall of Famer. Rudy Gobert's gonna be a first ballot Hall of Famer now because he has four defensive player of the years. Right? Look at look at the face you just made. Look at the face you just made. But he's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer because he has four defensive player of the years. When we all know if you take him away from the basket, he can't guard anybody. But it's just late. Like, I just feel like this generation of journalists are just so lazy with these picks. And it's annoying because these are these guys' legacies. Like, this is super important. When we do these debates. Like, we have to get into these nuances of, like, what did you win? What did you accomplish? Dude, like, there's going to be a day we're all dead and gone, right? And all we're going to have back is the record books. Somebody's going to be like, oh, that Rudy Gobert fella, he must have been really good. He was a four-time defensive player of the year. Meanwhile, Dwight Who's Howard can't Philip Rivers of centers. No, I'm just <laughs> Meanwhile, Dwight Howard can't even make top 75. When Dwight uh, Howard... Yeah. You're getting, you're going off on your tangent. You're just hating on analytical shit. <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just saying it's like back in my day we just won. <laughs> like no, but I'm just saying like the, this shit matters and like I, I hate that. So with that being said, that's why Caleb Williams is going to win Rookie of the Year. I I really want Caleb not to suck. I know he's in on my 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 conference. I know I have to worry about him, but for all the reasons, him being a USC quarterback, him just being his own dude, because we know like. A lot of the old school dudes, a lot of the guys, a lot of fan bases aren't with him painting his nails and shit. But that's also some shit that it's like you're focusing on the wrong shit because if he's dropping six touchdowns in three weeks. Oh, yeah. The hate him and Marvin Harrison got for being like this system is stupid and I'm not going to adhere to it. It's just it's literally it's like, tell me your your football racism without telling me your football racism. It's like, whoosh. Like, no, follow the system, boy. Like, who the fuck are you to think that you And the best part is is, is is Caleb Williams coming in, just being open more so than being like, I'm not doing something. He's like, I don't feel like I want to do that. Or like, just talking like a normal person. 
the fans that are twisting themselves in knots to pretend like the Bears have some system to defend. Like, he's it's, literally it's so sick. funny. Sports is one of those weird things because you can twist something however you want, right? Him crying in his mom's arms because they lost. It's like, oh, see, he's a baby. But if that was somebody that we all rooted for, we'd be like, yeah, see, that's the passion. He wants to win. Like, you take – we. Take- so that means, look, look at him. This means more than anything else. In right. The world. It's just a regular season game. It's his last college career game. This means, like, you know what I mean? Like, we just choose how we want to interpret information. We do that in general, but like sports, you really see it. It's like, we we just, like, we people do defending things. bad teams and have, and, and how, why these bad teams should be able to dictate this person's entire future because it's, don't get me wrong, I'm the guy that always says it's a fucking privilege that you're even making this much money to play a child's game. I get that point, but there's also a point of if I'm the best in my field in any other career, I can just choose where I want to work. That's true. And also, so, and then also and with him too. I, I the reason why I'm not getting on Caleb Williams too because a lot of people hate what his father said. I'm like, we can't do that. Don't. As someone who knows a famous person, it's one of those things like we can't do that. Like I got to choose my words wisely because people always assume that's those are his words. No, they're my words, right? And we've seen, especially with fathers or parents in general, a lot of times they're the ones casting checks that their kids have to have to cash in, right? Like, or writing checks that their kids have to cash in. We saw with LeVar Ball, right? So yeah. we haven't seen Caleb say these things. We've heard the father say these things about wanting to own a team or should have stock in the team or dictate where he wants to go. Like, for the record, Caleb has never said that. And so I want to be clear about that. Like, so a lot of hate that he gets is like, oh, he's so entitled. Da, da, da. I'm like, but hold on. His the stock thing is so stupid because it's either you're going to get such an infantile amount of, of the percentage anyway, but it's also just a crazy thing to just be like, yeah, I know I haven't worked here yet, but you should make me an owner. Like, it, like no, I'm, I'm all about I, equity. I get it, I'm all about equity. Really- if Caleb did say it, I would feel like, all right, yeah, bro, you're going to get hated for saying that. You can't say that. But his father said it. And to, again, for me, I'm like, that's important. That's an important dictation because we've never seen Caleb say anything like that. For the record, we have never seen Caleb say anything like that. All that stuff has been his father. And so a lot of people assume, well, if the father's saying it, it's because that's what Caleb wants. And so they're hating on Caleb. And it's like, that's that's... That's a very dangerous assumption to make. We've seen, especially in sports, we've seen parents kind of do that for their kids when their kids don't want to do Again, LeVar Ball is the example. The Ball brothers never wanted any of that crap. That's why they're not really messing with their father now. Because he and it's also crazy because it's, it's sad because in that regard because that dude did get his sons in, in careers. Yeah, like, it, you know, there, There's something worked, to be said but it also about. Like, went a little too far to the point where it's like, yo, dad, like you're doing too much, man. We got to be our own. We got to be our own men. And again, you're ch- writing checks that we have to cash because that's real. People hate that. Like Caleb, there, there, there might be defensive players who think the same way. Like, yo, really? I'm busting my ass with the NFL for 10 years and you think you're going to come in here and own a team and da 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 Oh, no, no. There could be defensive players in the draft that went in the sixth round that are going to be playing against him that a lot of these dudes are from the South and they see you painting your nails and they, they don't need another reason now to punch you in the face really hard. And, and some of these corn-fed boys, like, they don't need a bigger reason than that guy is making five times what I'm making for this game. Yeah, and that's and that's what I'm saying. It's it's that like that's what, and and to be fair, Caleb has said some things where I was like, ah, you shouldn't have said it, but that's normal. Area. Oh no, I hope he lives up to it. Yeah, I, you know, I hope he does. Yeah, so that's my thing. Because the Bears suck. Want, I just don't. I just don't want him to get criticized for something his father said because like that's not fair. Until he echoes those same things on record, then it's like. Mm, I don't want to do that because that because that we've seen that before where like a parent is going to parent. There's nothing you can do about that. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, but I again I think he's going to win Rookie of the Year. Maybe Jaden Daniels if Jaden Daniels like really tears it up. But I think the, I, we we talked about just at the fantasy. Uh, I think Caleb Williams' numbers is going to be crazy because I think they're going to force it. They have to like that fan base wants to see him throw for four thousand yards. They never had a four thousand yard passer before. They want- it's, it's so crazy to hear out loud. That is uh, like how I understand. I really feel like they just fucked over Justin Fields. I really do. I understand that he's made bad. But, but that's but that's my point. That's part of it too. Like they like they're gonna have to prove 
like yo we did the right thing right and so it's like I think I think his numbers are going to be astronomical this year. I really do. They might not be good, but I think his his numbers are going to be astronomical this year because they're going to force it. That fan base wants to see this guy be Pat Mahomes. They're going. Right, to- man. We'll see. So we'll see. And then, uh, repeat, repeat. It doesn't matter. You got the Lions. I got the Rams. Again, I partly put the Rams because I feel like the Rams is one of those sneaky teams. I like. I feel like they could be good this year, but also again, like to not. Like agree with you with damn near everything. Um, again, I I didn't feel confident enough to put them over the Niners for the division, but I'm like at the same time I do think this Brandon Ayuk and the Trent Williams situation they still haven't resigned Trent Williams yet. Um, that could mess some stuff up for them this season. So like that's what, I feel like the Rams like my sleeper pick in the NFC. Um, the NFC to me is wide open really. Um, but again, I still think it's the Chiefs. No, my so sleeper somebody- for the NFC is Atlanta because we're gonna because okay. because if they stack up a six wins and uh, in the division and then just win four more, they're a ten win team. And I understand the thing about Kirk Cousins, but we have these things in sports and they get broken, and that's why those games where they they break them are such great stories. And Kirk Cousins going on a Super Bowl run with a team with uh, that many weapons. You know, and I'm sure there's Vikings fans listening that are like, yeah, I fucking know, right? Yeah, I know, right? So I, I, I you know, I am tempering, but they, they would be my sleeper. Then, honestly, them or the Bucks, because it wasn't like the Bucks were that bad last year either. Like, like if we're picking sleepers, I'm going sleepers because the South, no, we, we ain't looking South in the NFC. Ain't nobody worried about the South. There's more hype in the North, which tells you everything. And, and it just yeah, I, is what I, it is. I just think a healthy Cooper Cup with a Puka Nakua, Matt uh, Stafford sh- should be healthy this year as well. Like I, 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 I Stafford think- should be healthy. That's his whole career, right? Yeah, um, yeah. and he's like, still a Hall of Famer. That's my point. No, but, but see, I'm a Matthew Stafford fan. A lot of people hate on Matt. Again, team game. Oh, he had Megatron. Yeah, name up. Yeah, yeah, but your whole argument about the compiling of the stats, Stafford did that too in losing games with Megatron. Yeah, there, yeah, there, there was. So that's the problem with Stafford, and you alluded to it. Like a lot of them were empty calorie stats, or they were behind in a lot of games. So they just said, "Screw it, let's just start throwing it up to Calvin Johnson and having him just go up and get it." And they did it. Um, but Stafford also, to me, he was doing some Patrick Mahomes stuff before Patrick Mahomes. It just again, it was a different era. Like that style, that old, that backyard style of football was not which frowned upon back then, but like he was doing the side arm angle stuff and the no look pat. He was doing that stuff before Matt Mahomes ever came into the league. So for me, that's, that's the difference between like Stafford and some other guys. You saw it with Stafford. Like, yo, this guy is really freaking good. They're on a terrible team. They've really, they never had a thousand yard rusher. They never had a top 10 defense besides Calvin Johnson. You probably couldn't even name another receiver. <laughs> like the offense. Roy was- Williams, bro. Roy, but again, even Roy Williams, I think he was only there for like the first couple of years. I don't think Roy he, Williams. You said name one other receiver. I named one other receiver. Sure. Um, like, the, like that team was not good. Like they had Indomitian Sue. That's it. Like they had a they had a, a, a D tackle, a quarterback, and a wide receiver, and that's it. That team was horrible. Truer words were never said. True words. And oh. then, but yeah, like, that's that's it. We got the Chiefs as a three peat. Um, I didn't even want to get into it in terms of like would. Because that was another topic that was brought up this summer. Would Mahomes be considered the GOAT if he three peats or it's never been done before, even though he only has four? I still think he would probably have to win one more. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think he has to get to seven. You know what I mean? Like, no, it, it's not only, seven. Only when we talk about Jordan do you have to match the fucking rings. But like no, if he does, if he does three, it, it's fair to have the conversation. You know what I mean? I, I you could it's him and Brady, blah, 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 blah. If he wins this year. And then wins either a year removed or he does a four peat, then we're like, okay. Oh, if he does a, if he does a four peat, then forget it. But if he if he three peats this year, I do think he only needs to win like one more. Like, like his five are gonna be a little bit more impressive than Brady's seven. Because again, like we, we brought it up, there is an asterisk to a lot of Brady's wins, right? You had Spygate, you had the defense for the first three. No, no, no. That's my whole argument with Brady. Because again, I'm I, I think Brady's the goat, so I don't feel like I'm I'm diminishing greatness here with the whole team argument. Belichick built defenses. Belichick is the reason. Me and you joked in this offseason that it's like 
the Patriots are the only ones that come to mind for consistently having a great secondary. That's Bill Belichick and Rockers. Belichick, Belichick was so good at building defenses. His biggest blunder in his career was letting his pettiness take out uh, uh, old boy when they played the Eagles and they gave up mad points. I'm like, yeah, why would you take out your best corner for being petty in the Super Bowl, you idiot? It's about winning, bro. Like he had a Jerry, he started to be like Jerry Jones where he had to be the reason why they won. And it was like, yeah, you played yourself, dude. Like you, you might have seven Super Bowls. Brady would have a good Lord. Um, and then that would really further the Eli conversation. Like he's like, I only want to be Brady. No one could defeat him. But like, yeah, like, no, nah, but like, yeah. But, but well, like, you saw uh, somebody gave uh, Tom Brady and Eli Manning jersey to sign. He wrote, "Fuck you." <laughs> I, by the way, I do love their. I do love their their. Let me also be fair, and I've said this multiple times. I love Eli Manning as a person. As a person, he's awesome. He's fucking awesome. hilarious. He's he's great. I love him as a person. He's hilarious. He's down to earth. I love that interaction between him and Tom. Like they just play off each other so well. It's like he just looks like, at Tom. He's like, "Hi." He's like, "Go fuck yourself." <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, like, or uh, did you see when he had, when he did the cipher? He's like, "Oh, they said Brady's the goat." Ha! I beat him twice. He not nothing. Like he's just, just, just like I love it. I love all. Like, I, I love everything. I love everything about Eli Manning as a person. And by the way, Eli, if you're watching this, congratulations. You had a great career. Congratulations. Hall of Fame career. A Hall of Fame career. You will make the Hall of Fame. I just first don't think that. I just don't think you were as good as headlining the class, not just first ballot, the shit you've been arguing this whole time. Headlining that class. Yeah, but to be fair, it's not the greatest class. <laughs> Who else is in that class? Let me see. Yeah, I look think... up who else. Look out, look out, uh, else. Look up who else is up because you know it's Eli. That's the my point. I've already won. <laughs> Tell them where you can find us. That's the, Everywhere. No, that's <laughs> not that's that's not how that works. <laughs> uh let's see. Hall of Fame clash. Beast mode. Yeah, this this class is not that good. Beast mode, Luke Keekley, Adam Vinatieri, Marshall Yonda. Terrell Suggs. Eh. Eh. By the way, shout out to Tom Brady for coming back that one year. Because if he would have retired the same year as Big Ben, I'm like, damn, bro, you just you just had to beat him one more time, didn't you? <laughs> you just had to, you just couldn't let him have his moment. Anyway, you can find me at Never for Brett Me on all the socials. That's N E V A underscore the number four B R E T T underscore M E on every, on all the social media platforms. Feels good having a quarterback that didn't have to be uh, Tom Brady's bitch. Go Giants at not the Chuck D on all the socials. Big Blue Wrecking Crew. I have to live in the past with Eli Manning because I have no fucking future with Daniel Jones. Why is he still here? Yeah, Why is he still here? See that why this, is he still this is here? what it really is. The Hall of Fame speech next year is his Super Bowl, so that's why he's so passionate. About why him. is he still here, Brett? Saquon's not here. Why is he still here? Because Why is he still here, Randy right? Dimes? What you mean? Bye. I'll see you later. We'll talk you didn't to you even later. shout out the pod. See, this, what's wrong with you? You can find us at the underscore dope blog on Instagram, the dope blog, all one word on Twitter. And because you're watching this on YouTube, please like, share, and subscribe, and join us next time as we continue to be to discuss other people's excellence. Yes, including the excellence of Eli Elite Manning. Eli's right here. You guys right here everybody. next to YA Happy. Tittle. Next to YA Tittle. Happy. Hey, enjoy the season, everybody. It's football's back. It's a great time to be alive. Lord Taylor's down here. <laughs>